Oh, right, right, right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Bronze to GM. We're in Platinum League. We have so many new things we're teaching today. Um, I, I was Mommy. like, oh, Platinum's just a natural progression from Gold League. No, no, there's, there's a lot of skills that we're starting to introduce. It might seem like a lot, so we're going to take it slow. We're going to try and make sure we don't, uh, I guess, uh, over, uh, you know, saturate everyone's brains with, uh, with, with all the stuff that's going on. So let's just talk you guys through the build. And the main thing we're going to focus on in game one is creep spread. So first of all, let's get our camera hotkeys going. Base one, two, three, four, five. And camera location. I know that was a little bit quick. Don't worry, I'll slow down. Okay, so add to the hatchery hotkey. Double tap, remake the camera location. Set the rally point. Build two more drones. Let's make sure this overlord's sitting outside the base. It is. And Nigel is going to go forward. And we're going to try to do two things that we're focusing on at the start of Platinum, guys. Always send Nigel in for a sacrifice at four minutes. Number one. Number two, we're going to be adding Freddie Mercury to the crew. That's right, guys. For those who don't know, uh, so far we've had Lizzie injecting our main base. That's bit the queen there. Cersei in the natural and Latifah in the third. But we've been missing creep queens, defensive queens, right? We've, we've, when there's been air units, we've had to reactively pull and conscript all of our injecting queens into defense. We haven't really been spreading creep other than the single creep tumor that Latifah spreads every game. And it's time to start adding to that. Why aren't we doing it? Because we just wanted to focus on one thing at a time and creep is not as high priority as well. You know, spending your money and building things and that sort of stuff. So today we're going to be introducing a fourth and fifth queen. We're going to add them into the build order right when we build our round of safety zerglings, which is after we saturate two bases. For now, let's just talk about the basics. Two queens and four zerglings. Completely standard here. And just keep building drones. And of course, what do we do after two queens and four zerglings, guys? We build zergling speed. Now, I'm still not pulling off gas. And arguably, Platinum League is where you can start pulling off gas to get a bit more minerals to get your third up, make your build order a bit better. I actually think we're going to reserve that until Diamond 3. If you want to start it at a lower league, you think you're ready for it, go for it. There's no such thing about you have to do this at this league. Obviously, we're just showing you a progression of skills and priorities that generally make sense. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, and uh, of course we get that third base right afterwards. Add to the camera location, recenter that, set the rally point, and then what do we do? Remember, after the third hatch, guys, Latifah starts up, and then we want to build an overlord. And remember, we've got overlords, so we want one more overlord out here, out front, out third. This one can move out front, this one can move out front, and we go back to droning. Very nice, very nice stuff. Now, remember with my drone scout at the start, all we saw was the barracks is in their base. So we said, cool, all normal. Lizzie inject, Cersei inject. Hold that drone key down, guys. Lots and lots of drones. Save the last lava or two for overlords. And of course, what are we missing? We're going to have three out front for our ring of vision. So we're going to build another overlord. Right click on the minimap down to that bottom left. Reselect the hatcheries, build an overlord. Right click on the minimap to the top. So now we can see air units coming in as well. Now Latifah's out, she's going to spread creep and move over to that third. And notice we are getting saturated here, guys. So, after our next macro cycle, we're going to do that next part of the build where things get a bit different. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, hold that drone key down. And that means it's time, guys. It is time. So if we can grab these drones, that's nice. But remember, what do we do? It's two bases saturated, so we grab the second gas and the baneling nest. We build a... We can actually grab these drones as well. Hey, three drones? Perfect. Why not? Click them on that gas. You don't need to do that, but why not? Uh, the other thing we're going to do is build a round of safety zerglings next and two safety... Uh, two more queens. So we just selected our hatcheries and built two queens. That's Freddy and Mercury queued up. Now it's tempting to build zerglings, but macro cycle. Always. Always. Inject Lizzie. Inject Cersei. Inject Latifah. Build one big round of safety zerglings. Add them to our key. They're going to hang out here. And then we can build a few more overlords behind that. All right. Let's send Nigel through. Remember, he's meant to go through at four minutes. So this is pretty late, guys. Nigel's Nigel's going through pretty late. And uh, let's rally our drones over to the third. See, we had a few extra drones. So we just grabbed some, send them over to the third. And we're back on drone production at this point, aren't we, guys? So Lizzie inject, Cersei inject, Latifah inject. Hold the drone key down. 
and uh, while we're building overlords, we can see what's up, and that looks like a lot of bio and tanks. Okay, let's put a circling outside to see if an attack comes. <laughs> Build a few more overlords. All right, guys, so Freddy Mercury just popped out, so we're going to grab this one. We're going to go Control-4. That's Freddy. This is Mercury. Shift-4. And now it's time to spread creep. And we're going to start spreading creep using shift like that. Now, they probably don't have enough energy to do that. But notice we're going to try and think of this as a lane, this is a lane, this is a lane. We're going to try and get at least two or three tumors on each of those lanes, okay? Now, let's stop. We've got to play. We're in platinum. Inject, inject, inject. We're at three bases saturated. So nothing but Zergling production and overlords. But we really need our tech, right? We need to do that next part of the build. Double Evo, Lair... And what else do we do, guys? Double macro hatch. If you're floating money, you can do the hatcheries and the evos at once. If you're a little bit slow and behind on your tasks, do it that way. Remember, though, this uses a lot of drones. So shift one for the hatcheries. Put those evos on number six. That's just a habit I like to do. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Time for another macro cycle. Let's really focus on these macro cycles. Inject, inject, inject. Build zerglings. Now, you might be wondering, when do you spread creep, guys? Now, there's a few ways you can do it. The important thing is it's lower priority than your macro cycle. If you want to do it after your macro cycle each time, around this time when you're adding upgrades and stuff, that's fine. But what you want to do is you want to start at one side. So I'm always going to do bottom to top, and you box the tumors, and then you just creep, click, creep, click. Or we can rapid fire, where we just hold down the button for the creep to spread. And that's something I'll show you guys how to set up. We're going to spread a few more tumors, because we only have not that many. So we're spreading a few with Freddie Mercury. So we hold down shift and we spawn creep tumors. But when you're done doing that, shift click Freddie Mercury back to your rally point so they're safe. Because if they're sitting on the edge of creep, they'll get killed and that sucks. Time for another macro cycle, guys. Don't get caught up in creep for too long. Inject, inject, inject. Hold down the Zergling key, the Overlord key. And, uh, oh, I actually started 1-1, one, one, but we forgot to start Bailing Speed. Let's still try to link these upgrades together so we always do them at the same time, just to make sure we don't forget. Okay, guys? Now, in between, what do we do? Well, time to get a fourth base and a macro hatch. Uh, fourth base and a fifth base, sorry. So what do we do, guys? We jump to the fourth camera location. We box the drones, build hatchery, build hatchery, click, click. Easy peasy. Now, I say easy peasy, but there's a big army coming, guys. All right, let's add these to hotkey. Set the rally points to the fourth. Time for another macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. Tons of Zerglings. A few more Overlords. Let's make a bunch of Banelings here as well. Holding down. We don't want to turn them all into Banelings, but you know, that's like a good 30 Banelings or something. That's quite a lot. And oh, here comes that army, guys. So what are we going to do? We're going to A move that in panic, right? Ah! No, fucking get your units together. Wait for it. Pull back. Freddy Mercury, run away. Why? Because my upgrades are going to be finishing. So I don't want to fight before my upgrades. Terran, when they push you, they want you to fight into their push. Notice this beautiful pre-spread from my opponent. They're saying, come and fight me now, please. Now, it's very easy. If I just backstab, I win the game. But instead, we're just going to wait for our upgrades. Oh, God. And what are we going to do, guys? We pulled way back. Thanks for the Deep breath. Inject. Oh, Queen's not there. Queen's not there. Get, oi! Get back there. Inject, inject. Build Zerglings. Build Banelings. Now we're going to get grouped up so we're not too spread out. And what are we going to do, guys? Our upgrades are finished, right? We've got 1-1. One, one. We've got Bane Speed. All those upgrades finished. Now we're going to attack move. We took no damage in that time. The only damage was panic. And yet, look at how much better that fight is because we waited for 1-1. One, one. And if we just panicked in... When he first arrived, my Banelings weren't done morphing. If I A moved, my Banelings wouldn't have even been in the fight. Now, what do you do after a fight like that, guys? Always inject, inject, inject. That's what you do. Build more Zerglings. We don't really need Overlords now. I guess we could build two Overlords to finish that. But that's, remember, Macro Cycle and then other things. So if you want to respread Creep, you grab Freddy Mercury, number four. Shift Creep Tumors. And then... Shift back to the rally point. And you can click them on the mini-map for that rally point as well to keep them safe. And then we can spread creep there. Control click is a really good one. Because if we box, guys, that's going to select the overlord. So control click is really nice for selecting all of a unit type. In general, it's way better than double clicking. It's just quicker and easier to use. One click rather than two. And that's really nice. Inject, inject, inject. Build zerglings. And uh, I really want to build these last two overlords, guys. I don't want to be stuck at 188 this whole time. There we go. Let's transfer some drones from the main over to the fourth. From the natural over to the fourth as well. 
So that was a whole bunch. Let's start 2-2. Two, two. Should we make more veins? Of course, guys. We're going to go for an attack, right? So I haven't really been scouting well. We've been talking more about creep and stuff. As these skills get a bit more sunk in, we can focus a bit more on map vision and scouting and map control and stuff like that. But that's going to be something we'll talk about more as the show goes on. For now, we're just trying to get the habit down of this creep cycle. So we're seeing, is there a base there? Nope. Is there a base here? Yep. And it's a planetary. Muff Cabbage, by the way, is a freaking glorious name. So let's aim move across the map down here. I want to avoid the planetary and attack the natural. Because I'd rather avoid the planetary if I can. Very strong unit. Now, this is a point in the game, guys, where we get a special thing. Freddy Mercury have energy. What can they use it for? A one-time energy dump where I'm holding down shift and I'm going inject. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that means these macro hatcheries are going to non-stop produce lava for the next five minutes without me having to do anything. Keep doing your normal macro cycle, except, hey, we didn't macro for a while. So let's actually queue these up, shall we? Inject. So we're queuing them up using shift, just spamming clicks on it. Which means I don't really need to inject at all for the next five minutes. I don't need to build overlords. Well, what do you need to do then, Pig? Stare. Stare. Up to now, I've said stop staring at your army. From this point, I'm going to say stare at your army. <laughs> we're allowed to do it now. We're encouraged to do it. Oh, ow. That Widow Mine hurt. All right, let's A move, guys. That's a lot of Hellbats and Widow Mines. All right, so remember, what do we do, guys? We can try to split some units into the natural. As always, nice. We can... You know, A moves some units into the third and the natural. Remember, I didn't want to fight the planetary, guys. So let's go up into the natural with everything. Let's try to get up there. And we can A move this. Now, I could click the banelings on these depots to get into the main, which would be huge. Or I can just hold that Zergen key down, add to control, shift two, keep A moving. That commands and it's going to burn down. Now, obviously, we can move in, guys. Get on top of those siege tanks. Move in, move in, move in. And we can see the power of the Ling Bane, man. The power! The power! Inject, 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 inject. Keep building Zerglings. Now, remember, if your opponent doesn't die and they're building planetaries and just trying to survive, but you feel like there's no threat from them, you can do the transition. What's the transition, guys? We've been at 54 drones this whole time. We've talked about this before, remember, where we take gases. So we take two gases there, two gases there, and then we build three drones. Right click on the gas. Build three drones, right click on the gas. The reason is we're going to need more. We're also replacing a few drones on minerals here. The reason is we're going to be needing more banelings the longer a game goes. Oh, hello. Now remember guys, Widow Mines are invisible unless you have overseers. So this is not good for us. We can't even see them. So what should we have done after the previous fight? Grab overlords, morph overseers, shift two. Bring these lings back. Inject, inject, inject. Build more Zerglings. Just keep Never doing this. And did we finish putting on gas? No, we got interrupted by that army. So we've got to come back here. This is something you want to develop the skill of. Being able to put a, a pin in something to come back to it a few seconds later. For me, I didn't finish building drones for this gas. Why? Because I saw my army was under attack. So I went and looked at it. And that's why normally you don't leave your army in the middle of the map. You leave it further back. So that doesn't happen. So you don't get your macro interrupted. If you leave your army on their side of the map, and you wonder why your macro is really bad. It's because you're constantly having interruptions coming in. So let's rebuild this fifth base. And guys, we're still only at 64 drones. If you take all those gases for banelings, remember we don't actually have much mineral income. So it's really nice to also build about five more workers. You want to go up to about 70. Five or six more workers for that fifth base. And since our bases will mine out, we should take that one too. Oh, look at this, guys. Big scary army. Okay, so we're going to pull back and make more banelings. Inject, 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 build more Zerglings, and try to make as many Banelings as we can, because they'll kill their Hellbats. Uh, Zerglings really suck versus Hellbats, for those who don't know. Um, let's get overload speed as well, so otherwise the Overseers won't keep up with the Zerglings. It's really big, right? If there's Widow Mines there, and you Amu, notice, look how slow that Overseer is. It'll take forever to get there, right? So that's why we're sending, we're sending him a little bit ahead right now, waiting for all these Lings and Banes. So you want to just kind of blow the Hellbats up instantly, so then the Zerglings can do everything else. Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings. Add to the army, and let's go. Let's try and move across the map, guys, to a staging point. Oh my god! Widow Mines! Oh, but as long as you have enough Zerglings and you're not pure Baneling, the Zerglings will naturally be fast enough that they kind of spread out a little bit. 
Let's build more Zerglings here. And what have I not checked for, guys? I haven't checked. Is there a base up there? So we're just A-moving here. We're just making sure there's no extra free expansions my opponent's getting. And you can see here, wow, my opponent's units are actually starting to trade very well. So let's pull back. Really good job surviving, guys. We're going to build an infestation. If a game drags on, I did say in Platinum we would be doing this. I didn't think we'd have to do it in game one. But we're going to make a hive. And this is just because we're ex explaining so much. Inject, 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 inject. Build more Zerglings. And you know what, guys? Freddy Mercury have been fucking bludging for ages. So let's cure a few injects on these hatcheries. And then let's use them as queens again. So we're going to spread a bunch of tumors there. A bunch of tumors down here. And that should be good enough. Okay. So we can spread creep, creep, creep. And remember, you want to go from one side to the other, bottom to top or top to bottom, and just do it the same way over and over so that it's very much repeatable. All right, guys, let's start a hive right now. Boom, boom. Build more zerglings. Inject, inject, inject. Build more zerglings. Let's leave a zergling on that top base. So shift deselect the zergling to send it there. And uh, basically, we're just going to try and swarm with Ling Bane. But because we're at 70 drones... Wait, 60? I thought I was at 70. Was I not at 70? Did I lose 10 drones just from building buildings? I'm... Mineral field I don't know depleted. what happened to me. Maybe I just can't count. I'm going to build 10 drones, guys. 70 drones is a very good number if you're playing kind of late game. Oh, and look at that, guys. By having a scout, we see, rather than attacking into the planetary and the army, we can attack up there. But rather than... YOLOing, let's go back to what we really focused on in the last session, guys. Alt 7, and we're just going to A move some lings into that mineral line. Okay. Oh, there's an army there. That's okay. Just run past the army like that. Don't even look at them from now, okay? Inject, inject, inject. Build lings. Build banes. Let's do that again, guys. Let's, uh, let's basically box some Zerglings here, and let's send them across to the natural as well. We're also going to go Alt-8. We're just kind of using it as a dumping key, so we'll just A, move them into the natural, and notice how I can move my main army around without moving those around now. Those guys aren't going to do anything, but at least we tried. You never know if he's F2-ing all to the top or not. Inject, inject, inject. So notice we went Infestation Pit and then Hive. So what do you do if you go Infestation Pit, Hive? You then go Ultra Cavern. And then when the Ultra Coven finishes, you make the armor upgrade and start making Ultras. But for now, we are still on nothing but Zerglings and Banelings, guys. And look at this. There's a big army here. So this time, we're actually going to move past before A-moving, guys. And we're going to immediately counterattack to the north of the map, okay? Now, I'm feeling stressed. Why? Because there's a red blob down here. I don't know what that is. So what can I do? We're going to take about half of this army. Alt. Three. And we're going to bring these guys down to defend, okay? So this army up here is denying that base. I don't want to attack in the planetary because I'm not watching it. I want to instead put all my focus down here. So we're attacking into a relatively safe location and then just leaving them to idle. While these guys, all my attention's on them. And we want to move past and then attack them, okay? Ooh, so we managed to just defend two sides. So what do you do at this point, guys? Once you start learning to multitask, remember, you want to tunnel vision on this to the point where you do really... No! Macro. Macro cycle. Inject. 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 He'd lost the game. He knew he'd lost. But it's about the system. And the system is... Don't just... Okay, I just run my units around now. No, 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 no. The system is after a fight. And that was a very intense fight. We just fought two battles. One on each side of the map. Do your injects. And then after your injects, what do you do? Kindness plating. If you've got spare gas... These are lower, lower priority than going for kiteness, but if you've got spare lots of money, you also want to go 3-3. That unlocks when Hive finishes. And Adrenal Glands is an amazing 40% attack speed upgrade on the Zergling, which is huge. And then we can spread creep. Do, 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 do. And remember, go from one side to the other. See, that was a bit chaotic because I started here, moved down, then went there and went up. I don't like that at all. I think that's a really shitty system, guys. What's way better for your creep when you do it is instead do it all the way from one side to the other and try to always go bottom to top, bottom to top, or top to bottom, whatever you prefer. But just the important thing is not which way. People are like, why is bottom to top better? Or why is top to bottom better? It doesn't matter. The important thing is to have a system that you repeat in a certain order until it becomes this subconscious layer of muscle memory. Remember what we were talking about in the bronze episode? 
A lot of actions in StarCraft start as very hectic. They take a lot of brain power. You're trying to figure things out. Your goal with everything in StarCraft is for it to feel like tying your shoelaces. Something you can do without even thinking about it. Something you just do. Your hands do it and you don't even have to think about it. You don't have to think about the individual actions. You only think about the outcome. And that's the real goal. So, with this creep, go down here. Control click the tumors. Click, spread, click, spread, click, spread. Control click the tumors, click spread, click spread, click spread. And you can just scroll like this, or you can click on the minimap. I prefer to click on the minimap, it's a little bit faster. Control click, click shift, click. Now keep in mind guys, we can also use rapid fire for that creep as well. Now why rapid fire? What is rapid fire? How the hell do we set it up? Well, let me show you what it looks like first of all. Rapid fire is basically a key where certain buttons uh, holding the button down also does the same thing as clicking. So for instance, right now, I can spread a creep tumor simply by holding it. I know I use weird hotkeys, guys. I use the semicolon. But I don't need to click to spread this creep. Let me show you guys. This is my mouse hand, visible. But watch, all I'm going to do is hold down that button. And it's as if I clicked. That was one... All I did was hold down one button. That's what rapid fire is. It's your ability to simulate mouse clicks with a button press. So, let me show you guys how to set this up. Uh, I didn't. I don't use this all the time. Often I will just individually click if there's just two tumors. But if I do ever end up with like 10 creep tumors on a screen, then I always just hold the button down and I just wave my mouse around with no actual clicking done. So that's something which is really huge. Let me show you guys how to set that up because this is kind of convoluted. Okay, so let's go to uh, completely base setup. Uh, poop is this hotkey setup profile. It's called Poop. I just reset the profile so this is completely standard hotkeys. What you need to do is you need to go into global unit management. Scroll down here. There's a thing called choose ability or AI target. Now that might sound like mumbo jumbo, but if you notice it says left mouse button. So you're like, what is that? So basically, you know when you click a spell or an ability, you then left mouse to place that ability, right? Select place, place, place creep tumor and the left click is to actually AI target it. So all you do is you add an alternate here. So let's add C. Let's imagine you guys are using standard hotkeys. C would be corrosive bile. Uh, corrosive bile and creep tumors are the most important things to be on that. Now, I believe creep is by default C as well, isn't it? Actually, now that I think about My it. <laughs> yes, it is. So by default, you could just do that. And now you can rapid fire creep tumors and corrosive bile from the Ravager. How great is that? Awesome. But what if you use a custom setup? You can actually add a lot more keys. So you can have many different things on rapid fire. So let me show you guys how to do that. Mineral All right, so I'm here on Windows. This is me Twitch chat behind me, guys. Let's, let's show you guys from scratch. Okay, so we're gonna open Windows Explorer. If you're on a Mac, I don't know how to find it. Go Documents, StarCraft 2. Now you're gonna need to I believe, I don't think you can do it through this. Let me see, pig381, I've got a billion different accounts. You can see Macro, Chad, Karen, <laughs> Lyzerg, Flash. <laughs> but let's, let, pig381 is the account I'm on. You might have to, if you've logged into a bunch of accounts on your computer, you might need to select one. That doesn't work. So instead you need to go accounts and there'll be all these different accounts you've logged into. Now, if you've only logged into one, there should only be one number, which makes it easier. I know this is the top one and I can go into the hotkeys folder there. And how do I know that this is the right one? Because I can see my profiles there. That poop folder. Oh, yeah, this is the right one. You see, it has that poop folder. So we can open up the poop document and check it out right up the top. It should be hotkeys target choose left mouse button C. So in game, you can only add a single one, but all you need to do is go comma uh, V and bam, V is on rapid fire as well, as long as you save this file. So you just save the file and that'll be good. Um, I don't know, you know, what V does. I don't use this profile at all. I can save it, that's fine. And then close it. Let's go back in game. <clears throat> go back out of hotkeys, reopen hotkeys. Go global, go unit management. And oh, look at that. There's an extra key there. Whereas normal, it only gives you an option to add an extra one, but it'll still show you the extra keys that you've got. Awesome, uh, really convenient. Especially important for like Protoss with rapid fire warp ins and people like to use this. Some like to use this to quickly spam down certain spells. <clears throat> I don't use it for any of my spell spell casting. Um, 
Uh, I'll use it with like Terran for sieging up Liberators very quickly, but I don't really use it very much for Zerg spells at all. On Mac, it's Library, Application Support, Blizzard, StarCraft 2, Accounts, ID, Hotkeys. Okay, so thank you, Rollcat. Apparently that's the directory if you guys are on a Mac, but, uh, and you can do the same thing in there. Well done, mate. All right, guys, we're up against a Platinum Protoss right now. Um, and we're just gonna try and continue to work on this creep, get the Freddy Mercury habit down. You can see how stopping to explain everything with Freddy and Mercury. I mean, Freddy Mercury is expensive. It is 300 minerals. It, it is going to slow our build down just a little bit at that point where otherwise we'd be exploding. But it's also going to give us creep, give us more longevity in the game, make us a bit safer versus a lot of different harasses and things. So I do think it's well worth it uh, just to get used to doing that now. And um, I think as we get more used to the build, we're going to speed up a little bit. So... Getting those camera locations set up, guys. Fourth base up there, fifth base up there. Uh, as always, I like to expand in that straight line most of the time. Center this camera location, set the rally points, and build two more drones. We've got the drone heading across the map for the scout. Nigel is going to go forwards and then kind of hide outside the base a little bit. That guy's going to sit outside, and let's remember, gas and pool. And you know what, guys? We're in Platinum League, so rather than just being lazy... Let's actually start pulling workers over and starting our gas and pool the moment we have the money, right? If we know our build well enough, that should be really easy. Now we see a Nexus. That's all we need to know, guys. The, the buildings are at home, Nexus at home. We're going to start paying a little bit more at uh, attention to scouting um, as we go forward, especially the second half of today's video on Platinum League. I'm going to try and focus a lot more on that. And especially if I get all in. If I die to something, guys, which is a very real chance when I'm focusing on just spreading creep and all this sort of stuff, um, that's going to be a really good impetus for us to look deeply at the replays and understand what happened. So right now I'm just focusing on like, hey, just do my thing. Just do my thing. That's fine. But as we play more, we are going to start looking more and more at our scouting, especially the four-minute overlord sacrifice for the big one we focus on. Big thanks, Graufon, for the sub, mate. All right, guys, we just built four lings and two queens. We're going to start ling speed up next. We're still not pulling off gas, remember? Just leaving that one guy on gas for a long time there. And we'll send a drone over to our third base. So use those camera locations. None of that lazy scrolling, guys. Camera two, camera three. Keep building drones. Keep building drones. Just tapping that. But, you know, before the macro cycle start, you should be pretty much nonstop doing that. Inject Lizzy, inject Cersei, and right after we inject them, we're gonna go for that third base. Remember, it's not really a macro cycle yet, because you don't have lava injects. Thanks for the base. Set the rally point, center the camera location. We're gonna build Latifa, and then we want another overlord. Where do we want that overlord, guys? We've already got two overlords out front. We need one out front, our third base. So we'll build that over there. And then back to Drone. Now, if you want, you can kill these rocks. You might wonder why do people do that? It's literally just so they don't accidentally A move it when clicking on the ground in a fight later. Inject Lizzie! Inject Cersei! Hold that drone key down, guys. Remember, we're always a little bit supply blocked there just for a few seconds. And then we want to build another Overlord. Click it on the minimap so we've got the dead space being watched below the main on the bottom right. Reselect the hatcheries, build an Overlord, and the same up on the top left, watching the backside of that third base. All right, so Latifah's popped out, guys. We're going to get her to spread creep and then shift click over to the third. And Nigel, it's sacrificing time. So we're just going to click him right through the butt of the Protoss base, through the front, out the butt. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei. And of course, we don't have Latifah in position yet. So just building some drones here, building a few more overlords, building a few more drones. And you can see, with all those drones popping out, we're going to be oversaturated on this base. So let's go second gas. Baneling Nest. And remember, if you want, you can pull those drones that are rallying, or you can just build new ones. But we're going to put those guys there. That was four drones, so we'll put one back on minerals. And we'll build a few extra drones there for the main as well, because you know you're going to be building some more structures. Now what do we see, guys? We see Twilight, Forge, some gateways. Tech structure, sign of greed. Upgrade structure, sign of greed. I'll talk more about that later. Let's go back to injecting. Inject Lizzie. Inject Cersei. Inject Latifa. Big round of safety zerglings that we just always build no matter what. Some overlords, click them to the back. And let's get a bit of map vision since I'm blind now. Let's get a ling on the third base locations using the shift deselecting guys. And then we come back, remake our control group. Let's also spread creep. And what did we forget? Freddie Mercury are starting up a little bit late. 
Remember, it's about the time we build these Zerglings, so we're starting them a little bit later than we'd like, but that's okay. Lizzie, Cersei, Latifa. We're back to building drones now. And a few more overlords. Um, that looked like an army. There's no third base for our opponent. So we're going to build a spine crawler here, guys. Maybe even two. And we're going to do nothing but build the army right now. Because we're like, whoa, what's going on? Let's send a Zergling out. Use deselect. Let's try and see what's coming. We're building lots of overlords. And we'll do another inject in a moment. I don't know where that army is. Because this is a big map. Oh, that's a lot of zealots, guys. We just saw zealots. So we want banelings. Banelings aren't so good versus Zerglings, uh, Stalkers, sorry, but they're great versus Zealots. So you really want to try and get those in the middle of the Zealots to blow them up, okay? So we're just pulling back here. Now let's grab all these queens together, guys. And we're going to put them on the Freddy Mercury key, bring them to the front. We're going to A move, and then we can move in with our Banelings and A move them as well. So we didn't want them to just blow up on one Zealot, we wanted them to get the surround. And keep building Zerglings here. And if we have enough to just surround and kill it all... Ooh, it looks like we might just barely survive. To be fair, we still had a spine up, actually. So the two spines really helped us there, guys. Now, the reason we built those spines... We're like, why'd you build the spines? Well, we saw an army move out, and we just spent all of our lava on drones, guys. Now, let's use our injects. The Freddy Mercury key is causing us problems right now. So we need to build two more queens to replace them. Let's get Latifa to inject. And we're going to keep building Zerglings for now because we don't know if there's more units coming. But look at our saturation. This is really bad. So let's grab a whole bunch of these guys, send them to the third base. And you can see now it's like, okay, let's try and build all those structures that we never got around to building because that attack came out. Double Evo Chamber, double hatchery. Let's make a lair, which is going to make on the third base because that's the only base not making a queen. And let's send some drones out, okay? To the watchtowers. Notice I'm just using the shift these to like, because it's such a big map altitude. I'm putting the lings everywhere on the map, and we'll just spread that single tumor. Okay, inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifa. And our drone count is basically where it needs to be, so let's do nothing but keep massing Zerglings. Let's go... No, let's not make 1-1 one, one until the lair's ready, which is not yet. Take a deep breath, guys. If you're getting disorganized, just close your eyes. Breathe in, breathe out. Shift click your hatcheries, shift one. Control click your hatcheries, sorry, shift one. Let's take a fourth base and a fifth base. And Lizzie inject, Cersei inject, Latifa inject, build more Zerglings, build more overlords, click into the back. Now, it's time to spread creep in the middle of this, okay guys? Let's get Freddy Mercury to spread a bunch of tumors down here. Spread that creep that's already there. And get Freddy Mercury to spread creep on the left as well. It's now time that our lair must be finished. 1-1 one, one plus bailing speed starts. We can go to our fourth. Shift one. Fifth. Shift one. Rally the hatcheries there. That was creep cycle. Adding hatcheries to hotkeys. Spreading creep. Guess what? We've got, we've got to have time. It's got to be time in our head saying time to inject. Time to inject. Time for another macro cycle. You really want to build that alarm in the back of your head that does that. Build zerglings. Build overlords. Put a few more drones here since this base has been under. One more drone there. And this base, you'll notice, is half undersaturated. So let's grab about half that mineral line, send it to the fourth base, okay? Now, we're in between cycles, guys. So let's do a right to left creep cycle. We're going to use that rapid fire. We're just holding down the creep tumor key and just waving our mouse. We don't have to click at all. And notice our queens, Freddie Mercury and their, I don't know what the hell the third band member's name is, bass player. <laughs> Freddie Mercury and bass player are going to move back to the safety of the rally point, okay? <laughs> we just didn't inject. Let's build more Zerglings. Let's make Banelings as well right now. And I think 1-1 one, one and Baneling speed, that's normally when we attack, right? Well, it's about 40 seconds till all that's ready. So if we make Banelings, move across the map with those, it should be about right. Let's spread another cycle of creep, guys. Control click. Use that rapid fire. Control click. C and just wave your mouse. C, wave your mouse. Now you'll notice that there is a, as the map's this big, you actually probably need even more tumors out there. So we're going to get Freddy Mercury to spread a few more tumors on the left. A few back to the safety. All right, inject, inject, inject. Hold down that Zergling key. And let's move across the map for the attack. So we're moving to here, the staging point. We've got a lot of Banelings, but I want even more. So we're going to make even more Banelings. We're going to send Gary in. This is Gary, the sacrificial scouting Zergling. Don't worry, guys. He believes in the cause. There's 40 Zergling virgins waiting for him in 
Abatha Zerg Heaven. It's totally real, guys. It's going to be fine. And as we wait for these Banelings to finish, we check. Yep, our upgrades are finished. And these guys are going to move in. And we're going to go for that big one one timing. And after defending the earlier attack, we should be miles ahead of our opponent. Let's move past the opponent's army, as always, guys. And then we can move it. Now, what we could do here, guys, is we could box some of the units that are kind of on the front of the army and move command them in there. And then aim them. Here, they're all stuck behind the wall, so box the units at the wall. Click in the mineral line. Remember what we said as well? Box units, click in mineral line. Box units, click in mineral line. It's a really good way to make sure your things get damaged. It's just making sure they're all not all stuck behind each other. So that's a really good habit that you can go for. Third base defended itself, but the main, the natural, all got wrecked. So let's go home, inject, 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 hold down the Zergling key, and guess what? Freddy Mercury, time to stack those injects. This game's been so busy, we never did it, so we're going to drop about eight injects there, and about eight injects there using shift, and that's going to turn these into lava fountains. You know, there's fountains of life and mana in Warcraft 3. Well, this is a fountain of lava. Now notice, guys, I'm not going to use rapid fire, because if I used rapid fire, I'd spread them all there. But I want two to spread here and only one to spread there. So I manually click them. Same here. This is why I don't normally use rapid fire for creep spread. I'd rather just manually go C, click, C, click. This one doesn't really matter. I can rapid fire it. Just keep that in mind, okay? Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings. We can make 2 2 upgrades. Now, here's the big problem, guys. Our opponent's making Colossus. We need a lot of Banelings to clear the Zealots and just get on top and blow everything up. We don't have gas. We're still on 54 drones. You guys know the transition that we do. If the game drags on, it'll be grabbing all those gases. But we're not going to bother. We're going to see if we can do this with just this amount of production and just keep macroing. Inject, inject, inject. Keep building Zerglings. Why? Because sometimes just being urgent on hitting your attack timing at a good timing is, is better than doing it the other way. Now, what I just did there is something you see pros do all the time, guys which is spreading creep just because it happens to be on your screen. Really good habit to build when you have 400 APM and you're a pro gamer. If I catch any of you doing this, I want you to hear my voice in your head saying, STOP! SYSTEM! MECHANICAL SYSTEMS! You're not dark, you don't have 400 APM, stop! Stop just doing things randomly. Try to create a system, let that muscle memory build. Sorry. <laughs> Remember, right to left. Okay, guys, right to left. Spread and spread it all at once. Don't just spread. Oh, there's a queen. Let's inject it. Oh, some lava. Let's build it. No. Full macro cycles, full creep cycles. If you don't do this, playing Zerg is one of the most stressful things in the world, guys. Because build another round of giant Zerglings. It, it just is overwhelming because you're always behind on your tasks. Now, we're going to hit the main again because there's a lot of cannon battery on the third. So I figure why attack there? Let's just go for the natural. And uh, we're just going to group up and let's go up into that main base. Now, you see those zealots are going to cause us problems. So we just blow them up with the banelings. And once those lings are on top, they can kill most things. Notice I'm moving, moving in, moving in. And we're going to build more zerglings. Those colossus are doing pretty good, guys. All right, we're going to instead group up and attack that base, okay? Inject, inject, inject. Now, this would be a lot easier if I took some more gases, guys. Spread some Zerglings over. Get these Zerglings. What can I do? I can click the Nexus. If I A move, they'll go after the cannons because those are fighting units. But if I instead click the Nexus, you can see they're at least getting damage rather than all being stuck behind each other. So we're just going to click the Nexus. It's going to take out his last income. Let's go back and inject. Let's cue these injects. Cue the injects. Cue the injects. One I'm holding down Shift and spam clicking. And guess what? That gas transition, we've ignored it for too long. Build gas. Build three drones quick. Build three drones quick. Go to the third base, same thing. Box the drones, build two gases. Build three drones, click. Build three drones, click. Okay? Now remember, when we do all that, we go to, from two gas to six gas. It's also nice if we go to 70 drones. So we're going to build eight more drones. That's one line of drones. Click it on our fifth base. And we can also grab about half of that mineral line about seven or eight drones, however many we managed to grab onto that fifth. And then what do we do? We go back to injecting! Now we could go hive here, guys. We could start that hive transition just for practice. But we should be able to win just with Zerglings and Banelings. They've got 2-2. Two, two. Our opponent's mining off one base right now. Unless there's a base down here. This is Gary 2.0, remember? Gary's an idea. 
There is no base there. And notice, always just checking for all that stuff. And especially if your opponent's playing Sky Toss or Battle Cruisers or anything kind of weird, guys, you also want to check along the edges. So I'm actually going right click, shift, right click, deselect. So notice what I just did. I actually gave an order to scout multiple locations here and then here to check the bases and then deselect the Zergling. Do another macro cycle, build a big round of Zerglings, and let's move forward to get that next big Baneling wave going. And look at all the gas I have available now. How nice is it once you get those six gases, guys? We're going to just box these guys to make sure the Banelings make on the front line. Make a solid 50 Banelings. And that is going to be absolutely delicious. Now, guys, if these guys are idling and you're struggling to grab them all, the game's really messy. Just remember, as long as you keep taking new bases to mine from, you'll be fine. You can always just control click on that idle worker button, click them to one of these new bases, and that's all good. Let's go win the game now, shall we? Obviously, we're dilly-dallying a lot to really talk about building the cycles. Actually, let's do a full creep cycle first. Creep, click, creep, click. We're just boxing these. Boxing, click, boxing, click. I really like the boxing click method when the creeps really spread out like this. Box, click, click, click. Very nice. All right, let's go win the game, shall we, guys? Got a lot of banelings. Oh, where's the army? Okay. I'm trying to find the army, guys, but it looks like... Okay, here we go. This will do. We're just going to move in there. The banelings will blow everything up. The moment they get in contact with it and that should be it all right we'll aim move back to there make some more banelings let's go inject 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 whenever there's nothing to stare at with the battle we might as well inject and build more guys we can start that hive which apparently the lair never stopped oh there we go the hives at the third base isn't it all right let's do it all right guys you're about to witness pure savagery <laughs> the zealots are on old position. Hey, move! And try to move right past the Colossus. You don't even need to attack here, because whenever they attack, they'll blow up the Banelings. And when you're right on top, you can finally aim move if you really want to. And the Colossus go down. And in this scenario, we got it. All right, GG, mate. Well played to David, man. Well played to David there. Let's take a little look-see. So he did a pretty uh, half-decent little zealot timing. I actually thought it was a stalker attack because he sent some stalkers out front. But luckily I scouted with Zerglings and happened to see some Zealots coming across. So this hit, 16 Zealots, no forward warp in point was probably the biggest weakness of this. Hits at about six minutes with, what is this like? 13 Zealots and three stalkers, which should kill a lot of players. And you might be like, well, how do I, how do I defend that? And remember, we didn't really need to change our build at all. We just followed the build as normal. And what did our scout see? We saw a forge and a twilight, which are two, two, two signs of tech. So let's, let's talk about that scouting, first of all, because we didn't see any sign that meant we needed to react, okay? Because this overlord, Nigel's going to go in. And what you want to do when you scout, we're going to be talking about this all through Plat League, is divide things into signs of aggression and signs of greed. So lots of gateways is a sign of aggression. So the fact that there is four gateways here is actually quite a few. And you could argue that is a sign of aggression, especially with those two, right? So yes, sign of aggression, lots of gateways very early in the game. Already four extra gateways, so, and I knew there was one there, so five gateways, big sign of aggression. On the other hand, tech structure, sign of greed. Just one tech structure, one sign of greed isn't a big sign of greed, but then a forge as well, a second sign of greed. And I went, you know what? That's fine. Some signs of greed, some signs of aggression can't read into it now if i see six gateways that are all finished completely building no tech holy shit am i going to react immediately with units yes yeah i'm going to just immediately start massing units right because in hindsight we can see he even took a fake gas on the natural here i was actually uh basically on 34 probes doing nothing but making zealots so my opponent here was pretty damn committed right i end up going i think 20 workers ahead and still surviving so I build my safety Zerglings, I make Freddy Mercury, and then I see the attack move out. Right at the moment where I would have been going, about to go double Evos, Lair, Macro Hatches, all that stuff, and I just built 14 drones, and my Zergling died at the front, and I saw some units coming out. Now, I didn't see what this was, but I went, oh, okay. I know my opponent doesn't have a third base, whereas I've just fully droned my third, so I already know I'm at least up about 10 workers when these workers finish, if not more. 
and now I know there's an attack coming. And generally, you always build army when there's an attack coming, right? You make sure you can defend that attack, right? Especially if you're not sure what it is. So what did we do? We started building army. Because I just spent every single bit of my available lava on drones, the, like literally half a second before I saw this move out, I was like, well, I don't have any ability to build units. I'll build two spines. And I'll send a Zergling out to try and figure out what the hell is going on. What is this attack? Is it real? Is there a big army? Like, what's going on out there? My ring of vision with the overlords is nice and far out, so that'll give me vision. But I was looking at this. Remember, we saw zealots. And we can recognize from how fast they move that those have charge. Now, you might be wondering, how do you tell? What's the difference? You very easily can tell. These are way faster than slow zealots. You should be able to just visually tell by how quick they are. That is a zealot with charge. So the moment I did that, what did I say? I said, oh, okay, more families. If it was just stalkers, we could just make mass zergling and just go for a surround because banelings aren't very good versus stalkers because they're armored units. Zealots, on the other hand, are light. Banelings do a massive bonus to light damage. So getting a pack of banelings is going to destroy any big clump of zealots, right? And that allows your zerglings to clean everything else up. Because even then, if the zealots all have to scatter, even if they spread well versus the banelings, it allows your zerglings to get the work done. So we swapped into units and we actually defended this with a 20 worker advantage. Now on paper, if my opponent did a proper tie all in and I built 20 workers more than them, I should die. Just basic rules of economics. I've put thousand minerals more into drones that have just popped out and have not had time to pay for themselves. My, my opponent should be able to kill me. Luckily, spines are very good defensively. Remember, I pulled all of my queens and put them on my Freddy Mercury key, my creep slash defense key to bring to the front. And my Overlord plus Zergling Scout saw the Zealots early enough to have the Banelings finished morphing so we could blow up all these Zealots very quickly and very effectively. So we get right in on top, the Banelings blow up all the Zealots, and from here we are massively ahead. Just hugely, hugely far ahead. And at the end of the day, this was just good map vision because I didn't react to the Overlord Scout at all. We'd be like, well, how, do you, how should you know this attack's coming? How should you not? I did not need to know this attack was coming. Why? Because this is a Platinum League attack, and it's a little bit half and half. There's a lot of gas with no follow-up. There's no third base behind it. There's a random upgrade that doesn't finish in time for the attack. There's not enough production for this to really be a full two base all in. So people will say, but I, you know, I want to be able to understand exactly what my opponent's build is. We're still in a league where people's builds don't make sense. They're still very inefficient. They forget things every game. Things don't perfectly line up. So as a result, it's going to be something where Unless there's a blatant sign of, like I said, six, seven gateways all completely finished when my overlord scouted. I just went, no, some signs agreed, some signs of aggression. Keep doing my build. And that is the important thing when it comes to scouting. It's not about going, oh, how, like, how do I respond to this play? It's more importantly saying, I don't need to respond to this play nine times out of ten. You're just checking for the extreme. Remember at the start, we checked with our drone. We see the gateways at home. We're not being proxied. Keep doing normal build. No worries. We're only checking with the drone scout to see if they've proxied us, number one. Number two, what's number two, guys? Number two, Overlord comes in. We're just checking if it's an extremely fast all-in. Because if our opponent was hitting us at four and a half minutes, five minutes with mass stalkers and zealots, it's a different story. I would have needed to build units much earlier. I should not have been building up to 56 drones, right? GGG. So once we put things in signs of greed, signs of aggression, Let's go back to our document and just very quickly uh, reiterate what are signs of greed. Extra bases, extra workers, more gases, more tech, more upgrade structures. Signs of aggression, on the other hand, is the opposite. Less bases, less workers, less gas, less tech, no upgrade structures, right? So if we saw no forge, no twilight, just a ton of gateways, maybe we see no workers mining gas, or, or they've only got one gas in the main, they don't have any other gas guises, we'd be like, whoa, most extreme gateway all in coming, quick, build units. Um, and if you don't even know what the other pieces are, their buildings, the structures of the other races, guys, it's time to go do some off racing. Go play with the other race. You need to at least know what the pieces are. Don't be like my wife and constantly go, Pig, Jared, what's this one do? Hey, they've got a Stargate. What's that do? What's this? And I go, because if I have to answer you live in a game on exactly the functionality of a Starcraft, like a walking tooltip, guess what? Maybe just go play a few games with Protoss and figure out what their pieces do. It'll probably serve you better. <laughs> Pig, you mentioned that other resources are better for teaching than Bronze to GM. What would you recommend? Bronze to GM is the easiest. It's the McDonald's. 
There's there's resources that are more information dense out there uh, for hardcore nerds. Um, Pig Daily episodes go go very deep on certain topics, uh, but uh, honestly, I think Bronze to GM is perfectly fine. Um, build builds uh, episodes, Euthermal's Terran School, uh, any of the build up videos I've done over the years, which I've done many of. Uh, ZVZ aggression is the key, right? Exclamation mark ZVZ in chat. There's an example of a series of videos that teaches you some some build orders that go to the next level. Bronze to GM is perfectly fine. I just used to be very unhappy with the fact that you're you know we're smurfing repeatedly that's what i was always like ah that's not great man ah you know don't really like the smurfing but it's actually fine and i've gotten better at using this format to actually teach so i actually think i'm teaching with this bronze to jam infinitely better than i'm teaching with the other bronze to jam that's the that's the big thing i'm i'm actually like i was watching my bronze to jam plat from the previous one today and i'm like this is not the this is not the most, this is not the best. This, you're, it's okay. There are definitely nuggets in there, but there's a certain, I'm just like, it's it's got good nuggets, but I feel like this one's a bit more organized. So um, we'll see, maybe it's less fun because it's more organized and it's more information dense, this one, who knows. By the way, guys, because we are doing platinum today, I should have showed you at the start, 2720 up to 3120. It's actually a pretty small MMR range, only 400 MMR from platinum three to platinum one. So I feel like these lower leagues are actually so small just remember, if you guys ever get past Platinum, Diamond is effing huge. It's over a thousand MMR. So each tier of Diamond is kind of like the same as going all the way from Platinum 3 to Platinum 1 uh, in, in just one tier. So you're, you're not going to get as frequent promotions as you move on. But I still think Platinum, despite only being 400 MMR, there's a very big difference between a Platinum 3 and a Platinum 1 player who's on the cusp of Diamond 3. There's actually, this is a league where we unlock a lot more details in the game. All right, guys, we're playing another Zerg versus Zerg. This is a big map, so it's actually going to be kind of hard to pull off the two base roach bush. Oh, wait, no, it won't. Guys, maps don't matter. It's all going to be about our execution. I mean, it, it technically won't be as good as on a smaller map, but it's totally fine. We're still going to do this two base roach bush. We're droning up. We're still going to send this drone scout across just to keep consistency with our build. And you could argue it's actually most important in this matchup, actually. And there's a drone here for some reason. Wow. Okay, is he going to block my hatchery? What's up, buddy? Is he trying to Evo Chamber? He's gonna build an Evo Chamber in my base. He's trying to build an Evo Chamber here. <laughs> I, I'm a Platinum player though. I don't know what my opponent's trying to do. I'm just gonna keep doing my build and building a base. We're gonna build two more. Oh no, an Evo Chamber! Ah! Now remember guys, an Evolution Chamber is an upgrade structure and it does not actually do anything other than sit there. So your counter to this is to ignore it. We see a hatchery on this side of the map. We build a gas, we build a spawning pool. And notice we just take the gas on the opposite side so it's not blocking our gas mining. So our opponent's being a bit of a funny guy. Let's just double check they did build their spawning pool. You know, just make sure that they're, they're doing normal things. We don't really need to, yep. It's just cool, they just want to build an Evo chamber. Now this gives them scouting of your base. And when it dies, broodlings pop out, okay guys? So, that's, that's the important thing. Let's make sure our guys are on gas. Let's rally to the natural. So the only thing is when you kill that, broodlings can come out and kill some stuff. Just ignore it, change nothing in your build, except the fact that I've already taken a gas. I'm not meant to take a gas. I was distracted by talking about the Evo chamber. Damn it, I went on autopilot. Okay, we're gonna just pull off that gas, guys. Doesn't change the build too much. It's effectively the same build. Shh. We've already been thrown off. Build two queens. Build four Zerglings. Yes, this obviously affects the build, but not too much, guys. Um, and do we want to kill the Evo Chamber? I reckon we'll kill the Evo Chamber just to get rid of it. Now, if you guys get thrown off and distracted and go offline, don't worry, guys. Just confidently go back to the strategic line you are meant to go to. Let's build an extra Overlord for the middle of the map. This Overlord out here. Cue this third Queen. And as long as we have a Queen and four Zerglings, we might lose some Zerglings to the Evo broodlings but that's okay we're not going to worry about it this evo moves there we've got two evos outside the base inject inject building drones building drones we've already got that third queen on the way <clears throat> and remember it's going to be 36 supply double gas now i could have pulled the zerglings back there to save them but we're going to imagine i forgot to do that and i just said that's fine i lose some zerglings okay 36 supply guys okay so let's take the double gas build gas build gas change the rally point back to the main as well we also want to build a spine crawler there at 36 supplies. So we can build that spine crawler. And 
And all right, inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, hold the drone key down. Latifah's gonna come out. She's gonna spread a creep tumor at the front. And then at three minutes 30, guys, we wanna go grab three drones. We wanna go double Evo and a roach horn. You wanna create a nice solid wall with that. And then we wanna get Latifah in the wall. Just check, there we go, hold position. And let's put guys on gas. Build drones and build a third gas soon after there as well. I don't know what I put for my marker as the third gas in the build, guys. Let's just double check the build. What did we write up? Uh, normally you'd go lair and third gas at the same time, but my lair's a little bit late this game because I was distracted by that opening. <laughs> All right, let's put guys on gas straight away here. You can see my build order is really thrown off. We're gonna build a few overlords around our base. Let's get plus one range. Oh, what was that coming, guys? We just saw something coming across the map. I don't know what that was. Okay, just slow Zerglings. So it looks like my opponent's not making Link Speed either. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei. And a few more drones are needed. Just four more. And that'll bring us up to 41. From here, nothing but roaches, guys. And then we're gonna go Roach Speed. And of course, because I'm floating minerals, I'd like to take a third base. So, oh, there is roaches. Oh, I'm blind. Ah, pull back, Latifah, get back. Ah, ah, don't panic, guys. Inject, inject, build roaches, okay? Now, if Latifah can pull back, that's good because she has a transfuse, okay? And we're just gonna keep building roaches here. Keep building roaches. We're gonna, oh, our roach horn's taking damage. So I think we have to go out here and fight to defend our roach horn. Pull back though, we don't wanna chase. And let's build a new roach horn because we can assume that roach horn's gonna die. We're gonna build a few overlords as well. We don't quite have energy for injecting. Kind of freaking out a little bit here. More roaches are coming across. If we can start roach speed, that would be great. So let's try to start roach speed since it seems like the opponent's backed off. I know we're wasting a lot of APM staring at the army. Let's try to not stare, okay? Inject, inject, build more roaches. And now look at my roach ball, look at that roach ball. Look at my roach ball, look at that roach ball. Look at my, so mine looks ever so slightly smaller. But when plus one kicks in, I think mine's stronger. So I'm gonna move a spine crawler out here. We're gonna try and defend this roach horn. And we're gonna move these queens out as well. So we got Latifa there. Let's do another inject, another inject. Build some overlords, build some roaches. Now right, we're gonna have to do a fight here. So we're gonna move forward. And, oh, my opponent just panicked. Killed their own guy. So we're gonna try and A move after them. So let's A move across the map, guys. Did they just kill Cersei? No. All right, so we can take a third base behind this, guys. I never set up the camera location, that's okay. Oh no, our army's fighting. That's okay, guys, we don't even need to look at this. We know we have the numbers advantage. Inject, inject, build roaches. Our plus one's finished. We could start plus two, but instead we're just gonna wait for roach speed. So let's group up a little bit here. Now you can make ravages if you want, and that really helps the strength of your army. But all I'm doing is building more overlords, building more roaches. And now that roach speed's done, we're gonna commit to a big fight because plus one roach speed is always the attack we wanna go for with this build. And we're gonna try to move forward to dodge those corrosive bars. So if your opponent corrosive biles you, you wanna try to move forward like that. So you dodge the biles. Now you wanna judge the fight. Notice that's more roaches than I have guys. So when your opponent has more roaches than you, you wanna run the F away. Click back to your side of the map. Inject, inject, go to the third base. Get Latifah over there. And what we can do is we can start plus two weapons and we can build one round of drones. If you're getting chased by a big army, you can't do it, but otherwise we're gonna build one round of drones for our third base. We wanna take another gas geyser as well. Let's try and build drones for that. But because you're trapped in a what we call a low economy roach war, this is where scouting can get really advanced. We're gonna try and introduce you to it. Inject, inject, can't inject. Grab these drones, send them over. Build roaches, build roaches. Okay, so we're gonna be basically just committing to a plus two timing as our next win condition. Now, what is this advanced scouting I speak of? Basically, we're gonna drone 11 drones on the natural. We're a little undersaturated here, so it's not really 11. Let's say we've got eight drones on the third. So full main, full natural, eight drones on third. Now compare that to our opponent who has what looks like 16, 18 maybe workers. You see that's that's easily more than 16 because they're bouncing all over the place and there's a gas. That means I am behind in economy. 
Now this is introducing in a mirror matchup, the fundamentals of economy versus army are seen more plainly than anything else. We're building roaches, we're building overlords, injecting. That's all we have to do behind this, okay guys? So if they built eight plus three plus an extractor, that's 11 drones more than me. Whereas I'm doing nothing but building roaches. So that gives me confidence I should have more army than my opponent. If I just keep building roaches, attack with plus two, don't build any more drones, there's a good chance that I actually can win the game. So we're building more roaches, building more of them. And look, our main's half mining out. Oh, good thing we didn't overbuild workers because we can just put those guys there. And we can start a fourth base as well. And then what else are we doing? Building roaches, guys. And notice it's a pre-planned attack at 41 drones with plus one. And then if that doesn't work, if we can just build about 10 more drones, take one more gas, maybe two more gases depending on how the game goes, then your next attack can work really well. Unfortunately, I'm supply blocked, which is really bad because my attack needs to be going right now. At least the supply block is only slowing down the rally and nothing else, guys. So we're going to run forward to this area. We're going to try and attack in this relatively open space and see if we can win the game. While we're moving across, let's see if we can do some injects. Inject, inject, inject. Nothing but roaches. And we're clicking on it. We're going, oh, look, plus two is done. So we're clumped up. And now we just want to move on top. And move on top. All my roaches are fighting. None of them are getting hit by biles right now. And you can see my opponent even took an extra gas. I saw corrosive biles come down. Even if you can't see where the biles are, if you just move on top like that, in medium-sized fights, that's a pretty good way. You see, in that case, I, I ran away from it. Even better is if you, like, spread roaches and then give them an A move, but it's all about that. Are you not concerned about being on a timer versus lurkers before 2-2 kicks two, in? No, I mean, if someone has lurkers, they just lose because they won't have enough supporting units. Lurkers are a very expensive unit, so there's no way... If my opponent got lurkers, they wouldn't have hive tech upgrades. There'd be, like, three lurkers, and they'd have next to no roaches because they need a crazy amount of gas and tech for that. Uh, we could chase this base. There's no real reason. Oh, look, my opponent even droned a fourth base. So my opponent built a crazy economy in this game, guys. A crazy economy. Remember, I was I was saying, ooh, they fully droned their third. That's greedy. And, uh, yeah, we didn't. Why is there no creep spread in this game? Because there's no reason to spread creep in ZVZ. It helps your opponent just as much as it helps you. I mean, it's not bad. We've got a creep tumor or two, but it's just never a priority because it's going to help both sides. Now, you could argue, uh, if you're playing like Roaches versus Zerglings, it's going to help your Roaches keep up a little bit more than the Zerglings, but I mean, it helps both sides. So it's just not critical in ZVZ because it helps both sides. The only advantage is it gives you some extra vision, which is nice, but other than just connecting your base is not important at all. So if we look in that game, guys, my opponent went up to about 70 plus workers, I believe, which is a wild, wild amount of economy. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about that dance of uh, workers. See, my opponent took a little bit of a worker lead here and was actually looking okay in that regard, but had no lair, no evo chambers, no tech. So that's actually one of the things. They were way behind and they take a really early fourth base. So my opponent never really was getting to actually the, the proper upgrades that could match my army. There's still no evo chambers down. And actually my opponent wasn't ahead on economy. Even though I saw an overflowing third base. Look, the drones are even, guys. Why? Because they're main was undersaturated even before the minerals ran out. They only had 13 drones and the natural was only at nine. And this is why this sort of advanced scouting on the third base is not necessarily the most 100%. Ideally, you can see the whole picture of what's going on, but it's a good idea of what pro gamers will often do is like, okay, I'm going for a big roach attack. I'm not building any drones on my third. Imagine if I had no drones on my third. Just mass roach, mass roach, mass roach. If I see my opponent flooding their third with drones, I feel really confident because I know they're building economy rather than army. They shouldn't be able to defend my attack. And that's going to be really huge. Aren't we afraid of muters? Oh, lots of stuff, guys. Yeah, muters. Creep would help versus muters as well to move your queens around and push your roaches across the map, see where they are. So don't get me wrong, guys. We should have overseer scouted as well. If we had zerglings, we could do that to, to, to scout the follow-up. That would have been great. Um, opening was a little scuffed because that Evo Chamber, as much as I was like, don't, don't get freaked out, don't get freaked out, stick to your build. This is such a new build I've done so few games of, I'm like, oh god damn it, I stuck to the wrong matchup build and built the gas. Uh. But yeah, in general, Overseer scouting, always. Anytime you're in a lair tech standoff in a Roach War, send an Overseer, and that's what I should have done with this Overlord here. 
Nigel, when he went in for the scout, he should have been an overseer and then he could have scouted everything just to check what's going on. Because if I saw the whole picture of like, hey, why don't you have the second gas? Wait, wait, you're only on two gases? I would have realized my opponent's economy actually sucked. Their tech was way lower than I even realized it was. And I already knew my upgrades were ahead. I could feel because my opponent, opponent spent all this gas on roaches and I defended their attack. I knew I'd be ahead. I thought they'd have at least plus one. But in fact, I had two upgrade advantages, which is massive in roach first roach. Yeah, Nigel was basically doing pleb tier perving here. He was just watching. But you'll notice overlords have quite a few eyeballs. Um, overseers actually double the eyeball output of the overlord for those who don't know. You can see here. So you can see he's got four little eyeballs on each side of his head, those little red pervert pervert beams but uh, overseers have even more and they have an eyeball they can pop out the top of their head as well which is awesome when do you go one one upgrades rather than two zero you would never opt for armor over attack unless you were up against ling muta if your opponent's going heavy zergling mutalisk those units are very low damage units and the mutalisk bounce especially is really affected by armor um so armor the only time it beats plus two attack is if you're up against heavy mutaling yeah all right, guys, we're in a Zerg vs. Terran vs. a 2.9k player, Gara. Uh, so a Platinum 1 player has been up to as high as 3k before. I believe is Platinum 2 right now. And we're going to keep working on this build. This is a matchup Mommy. where I think Freddy Mercury excels, right? Our Creep Queens are going to be so important in Zerg vs. Terran as we level up. Natural base, third base, fourth base, fifth base. Camera location. Check those all work. Yep, just scrolling through those camera locations, just pressing one button after the other. Let's send a drone across the map to scout, make sure we're not being proxied. And we'll send one of these drones over here to build this expansion, of course. So we'll click that egg down, still doing our 17 hatch here, guys, very standard. Let's build hatchery, very nice. Shift one, set the rally point, set that one, build two more drones. You know, it's kind of funny because I, I emphasize uh, iterating and, and really getting repetition so much that sometimes I do feel uh, players take it to the extreme where they just can't adapt at all. So there is something to be said for... Let's bring this guy over. Remember, guys, we're in platinum now. Let's get that spawning pool right on 200 minerals. Uh, there is something to be said for learning how to do different adaptations and stuff in different situations. If you... It's... um. If you enjoy doing that as well, I would just say the only rule is map them out. Don't just like randomly make Zerglings one game instead of Roaches and uh, then never think about it. Don't randomly make Roaches instead of Zerglings and never think about the why or the follow on details. If you start investigating a sort of strategic branch or reaction or a change to your style, write some notes down. Think about the next steps, the problems you run into when you play that style and figure those out. As long as you're always kind of critically working to understand a situation in starcraft more you're going to be better now here's a hot tip guys notice these workers are stacked up three to a patch so you want to grab that and even that out if you can and he goes right back to the patch what an idiot you're going to build two queens four zergers it's not worth messing up our build guys we saw the buildings are at home by the way so fully overlord back let's start link speed <laughs> i can't believe you went right back this is insane so what you need to do is you need to spam click to make sure they stay on the correct location and then we can keep running those. Oh, there's a Reaper here, guys. Okay, let's A-move our links to it. We want to send our drone to our third base. And the Reaper died without us doing anything. We just attack moved it, and it died. That's very good for us. Building more drones. Thank you very much for the cheer there, Wild. All right, Lizzie's on in the house. Lizzie chucks and injects. Cersei chucks and inject. Third hatchery goes down. Shift one. Double tap one. Remake camera location. Set the rally points. Latif is on the way. Next up, we build a third queen. So we can build that third queen, click her out in front of the third base over here. We can move this one forward there, this one there, and this is going to give us that nice ring of vision to see anything coming. Keep building drones behind it. <clears throat> Lizzie! Inject! Cersei, inject! Remember, drones, 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 guys. The Overlord pops right on time. Just see how nice that whole keeping that cinch together, keeping that link together, that part of the build, so important. Build Overlord, bottom left dead space. Reselect Hatchery, build Overlord, top right dead space. Build more drones. Latifah's in that house, so Latifah's going to spread some creep and then A move. So if shift A move to her to the third base, 
Just checking my camera locations are good. My bases look all very nice. Indeed, they do. Monorail, thanks for the sub, mate. All right, Lizzie inject, Cersei inject, Latifa not ready to inject yet. And guess what? We're going to build a few more drones and then a few more overlords. But because we are saturated, time to go. Second gas. Failing gas. And remember, we can take these uh, these drones as they pop out. We've been doing that a little bit. Just click them on the gas. Build a few more drones to put on there. <clears throat> and remember, we need to build those Zerglings now as well. So let's set our rally point to our third ahead of time. Time for another macro cycle. The bugs. Inject, inject, inject. Build that round of safety Zerglings. I didn't save any lava for Overlords, so let's just wait for one or two to pop out. We can click those to the back. Let's spread this creep tumor. Thanks for the base. And you guys know what else we're going to do at this stage, right? We're going to build a queen from the natural and a queen from the third. Who are they? Freddie Mercury in the house. That's right. Our creep queens are now on the way. So they're not super early by any means, but they are going to help us defend quite a bit. And look at this, a Viking coming in. Oh, that's so annoying. Ignore it. Inject, inject, inject. Back to droning, guys. So we're going to build some drones there. Oh, we forgot to send Nigel through for the scout. Let's send him in now. There's a medevac coming right now. Okay. I don't know what's happening. We're going to make a few banelings and a bunch of zerglings. I don't know what's going on, guys. Uh, I have no idea what this is. So we're just going to try and uh, build some more fighting units to make sure we're safe. We're already at our work account. Let's grab Freddy Mercury here, guys. Put them on the Freddy Mercury key. And oh my god, Elbats. Okay, guys. A move our queens. And let's move the banelings into this, okay? Banelings wreck Hellbats. But we need more of them. Inject, inject, inject. Remember, once your army's dead, there's nothing to micro. Queens, all you can do is really A-move them. The banelings you can try to move in the middle of stuff, but that's about it. We're going to build a bunch more queens, guys, because this is getting really annoying. And we're going to try and rally these guys over here. Now, what you want to do is, if you can click the queens on the metavax, that's good. But I think this is way too chaotic for most players to remember to do that. So all I'm doing is trying to inject, inject... I can't believe all my injecting queens are still alive. Build more Zerglings. A Liberator. <gasps> ah! What do we do when we see a Liberator, guys? Build a Spore in each base. And then move your queens around. So we can move the queen there. This queen we can try to move. Try to pull the drones away. Looks like that's going to die. So we can click them straight back on mining. Oh my god. Things are stressful right now. Okay, guys? So let's put that queen back. Cersei back. Freddy here. Mercury here. Latifah back. Oh my god. This is insane. All right, so let's grab those together. Freddy, Mercury. Let's spread some creep, okay? And do another. Macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. Uh, build some drones here. We're supply blocks. We're going to build like 10 overlords. We've got a new queen up here as well. We'll add that to the Freddie Mercury key. Cue it to the front. Shift four. And we are so behind on everything. Double Evo chamber. Double hatchery. Lair. I mean, let's build extra drones to replace these ones that are going down. Select the hatcheries and shift one. Let's take a fourth base and a fifth base. Just macro, macro, macro. We have so much catching up to do. Okay, guys? Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings, build Overlords. Now, let's take a look at our supply. Oh, 54 drones, perfect. Go to the fourth base, shift one. Go to the fifth base, shift one. All of chat's pointing out the lair is so late. What's going on? Well, guys, you, you might notice there was a Hellbat Marauder all in. Jesus, Twitch chat. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very late. It's okay because we had things took our priority, guys. Starcraft's all about adjusting your priorities. When your opponent's trying to kill you, that takes priority. Think about it this way, guys. Maybe you're setting up your base. You're in a Roman army, you're trying to build fort, but the barbarians charge you while you're building the fort. Do you keep putting the picks in the ground to build your tent and dig your ditch? Or do you form ranks and fight off the barbarians, then go back? You fight, you fight off the barbarians, then you go back to doing the other things. That's <laughs> priority Priority number one is, is kill your opponent's army and survive, then you can go back. So always but once you you diverge as needed you do your set reaction you go back to the rhythm okay one one and baneling speed starts inject 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 build lots of zerglings lots of overlords and you know what guys let's try and while we're learning this let's try and do creep right after look at this full creep cycle see where we did that we'll try and do creep right after the macro cycle just to learn it because that's actually what i did when i was first learning how to get good at creep spread so i think it's a pretty good method 
And what are we doing, guys? It's the one-off Freddie Mercury uh, 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 bloody album drop right here, where they queue a billion injects on these two hatcheries, okay? Inject, 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 build zerglings, and shift two. Okay, let's make some banelings here as well, just so we're kind of safe. I feel very blind, guys, so we're going to send zerglings all over the map. Remember? This is shift deselecting. Look how fast I did that. That's unfair, pig. F2, pull it home. I'll do it again just to simulate being a platinum player who's slow and maybe doesn't have the hang. Shift. Right click. Thanks for the Bezos shift box. left click. Right click. Shift left click. Right click. Shift left click. Right click. Shift left click. Click home. Control 2. Oh, look what we found! Okay, box. guys. Do we send our whole army there? No, we just go Alt 7 and send some Zerglings to the corner. Remember? Alt 7, that backstab key. Inject, inject, inject. Now, as I was injecting, I just saw something in my main, guys. What the hell is this? Is that a scouting medevac? What is this? All right, so let's send our queen there. Freddie Mercury is our anti-air defense key, remember? So let's send those over to try and hunt this down. Our 1-1 one, one upgrades in Bane Speed are finished, guys. So let's max out on Banelings here. And let's go win the game, shall we? Okay. Looks like our backstab got killed. That's fine. We're going to send another backstab there. Alt 8. A move to the bottom left. Even though those guys apparently won that fight anyway. And 1-1's one, done. Let's go win the game, guys. Look, another Zergling is here. So because my opponent knew they were behind, they're trying to hide bases. Let's transfer workers to our four. Inject. Inject. I was like, where'd that queen go? Eject. Alright. Oh, we don't actually have that many Banelings, guys. Oh, okay, that's why they're back there. I see. I was like, where are my Banelings at? Alright, so we're gonna get the Banelings in here all together, guys. Now, if you spread out ahead of time, that can help a little bit. It doesn't really matter. The main thing here is attack move. And he doesn't even have a wall off. So if we can box some of these units and send them forwards, guys, remember, don't control your own army. The bigger the fight is, the more you want to just kind of move command sections of units into different areas just to make sure your lings and banes are kind of going to different places so what am i doing I'm just clicking units to different areas a lot of them are still stuck behind each other chasing an scv but uh that was a really really nice hellbat marauder mate gg well played very scary that was actually a very scary time i was um a little surprised by it i gotta say uh all right, very nice attack from my opponent, guys. So could I have scouted that with my um, my scout? I don't think so. I don't think there was any super obvious tell. If I'd sent my Overlord in earlier at four minutes, guys, I mean, I would have seen a Marauder, which would have been a pretty big tell, potentially. Like, if the Marines don't kill it quickly enough and I spot the Marauder, Marauders plus Hellbats plus Starport with no add-on, this is obviously a Hellbat Marauder all in. And you as Platinum should not no nor care about this because people will do all sorts of weird builds and it could mean anything and we see that what happens is if you have good enough map vision and you just react okay you'll be able to defend most things like this as well obviously if you get an overlord to the very back and see the armory you'll know but with this build they build a viking first and two marines so you're usually not going to get any info because the viking and the marines will clean the overlord my overlord didn't die straight away because it was so slow to get clicked in that I actually got some info with it, but I didn't even look at said info and... Well, actually, it ended up seeing the medevac leaving. So it did warn me that something was coming my way. I said, well, I don't know what that is, but I might as well build Zerglings because I'm already at the important point in the game. And just spending your money is the most important thing. And uh, essentially, we morphed some Banelings with no idea what this was. I had no idea it was a Hellbat Marauder. I just said, I don't know what's happening, but we're going to build some more Zerglings, make some Banelings. That's just a way we can spend money to increase the strength of our army. And it was only when I saw the Hellbats that we morphed 16 more banelings. We were just like, as many banelings as possible, oh god. Now this is really dangerous where we morph them. If I didn't have these other banelings, what I should have done is ran back here and morphed them there. Because otherwise, if he had enough to overwhelm, he could have killed all the morphing banelings and then I'd be in huge trouble. Ooh! So, he should have spread the Hellbats out there, guys. And that would have given me a lot more trouble. So rule number one with this. This is such a committed attack. Gara should have scanned ahead, seen the Banelings. And he should have basically spread one or two Hellbats forward and spread the other ones around. So that my Banelings are only hitting one or two Hellbats. Keeping them in a clump like this is only good versus mass Zergling. And in this case, with Banelings coming, you can see my Banelings are hitting like four or five Hellbats. 
big juicy hits. If he had a few more Hellbats left over and he got on top of those Banelings, or it went and killed the drones at the third, either could have caused me a lot of trouble here. These units are also way too fun. GG's. But, uh, cool. So, 55 drones and I'm defending. Now, arguably, 55 drones versus 27 SCVs. We have been incredibly greedy, have we not? Yes, we have. But because our opponents are expanding, they're making it look kind of like a normal game, uh, and then they're cutting to do these attacks and they're not efficient enough, we're not getting punished that hard just by following the build. And this is the beauty of the leagues, is you can basically just chill out and do it that way. Pig, you had your Suicide Scout Overlord. Did you learn anything from it? It saw the attack move out. It didn't go in early enough, and it wouldn't have seen anything to react to either. Uh, it wouldn't have seen anything that gave me any tells. This was a very well-disguised push, but one which, as we saw, you can stop simply by reactively making Banelings. A spine crawler would have been a good idea for a bit of insurance as well. We built, you know, a spine, but mostly just make Banelings, make Zerglings, bring all the queens to the front, and you'll be good. I've heard from another StarCraft coach, the Overlord needs to go in at 4 minutes 20. Um, 4 minutes, 4.20, it doesn't matter. It, it's... Earlier is going to be way more important versus Protoss. Uh, later is really good for like spotting battle cruisers, but you're not going to spot things like a hellbat timing as early as possible. It's it's the thing is like people are always like, well, what's the best? And it's like, well, the important thing is you go in at a time that's generically good to gather information. Four minutes, very useful to gather information versus Protoss and Terran, right? Very, very, very much so. Is 150 APM for platinum realistic? I don't know. Did I have 150 APM? Is that why you're asking that? Uh, you can easily have much higher APM. So the thing is, like, I play, I'm play, i playing Zerg, and I'm holding the Zergling key down on seven hatcheries. So my APM goes to, like, 1,300 every time I build Zerglings, just by holding a button down on my keyboard. If a Platinum player goes and changes their Windows registry, which I've shown how to do in this Bronze to GM, changes that, sets their hockeys up correctly and regularly does a macro cycle and holds the button down, their APM will go up by like 100 average. It'll go up massively because of that. Um, obviously, I'm trying to do things kind of semi-slow and methodically, and I am trying to slow down. Every now and then I catch myself doing something a little bit faster, so I repeat it. Like I sent Zerglings all over the map, and I was like, oh, I did that a bit quick. So I F2'd them home, and then I did it again slower, explaining what I was doing. That's gonna inflate my APM on the chart, but obviously a Platinum player is not going to do the same thing twice in a row when they're playing. So that APM tab doesn't tell you that much about what's going on. A Protoss player can't hold a button down to build 4,000 Zerglings at once. Their APM is naturally going to be far lower. So don't tunnel vision on APM too much. Watch the speed of what I'm doing on the screen. And if you feel something is like, whoa, that's so fast, that mouse speed. Can you slow down on that a little bit? I love that feedback because I'll be like, oh, you know, I was doing that thing that is a deep subconscious layer of muscle memory. I was doing that automatically without thinking about it so quickly. I should slow down a little and explain what I did there. So please give us that feedback as much as possible. If you guys see something just blink of an eye too fast to catch what I did, please let me know. Guys, do Pig already spoke about ZVZ Ling Bane matchup? What's up, Hutchies? We're teaching a two-base Roach Wall off. If you guys want to follow along with the notes, you guys can see exactly what we're teaching today. It's all in the Platinum session. We've got this one way more organized. Episode 3 Platinum. Exclamation mark BDGM doc if you want this, guys. Exclamation mark BDGM doc. So you click that link. You can only view it. I, of course, can write in it. Uh, creep spread. Rapid fire, creep, and biles. Overlord sacrifice four minutes every game. Placing a Link Scouts around the map for vision. ZVZ build variation is the two base roach, off, roach style. So we can see this. We're going to be skipping Ling Bane. I still think Ling Bane and learning how to play Ling Bane is fantastic. If you want to do that, then you can always follow my ZVZ guides. Aggression is the key. That's essentially what I teach people in my previous Bronze to GM is how to get good at Ling Bane Micro. But I know maybe 60% of the player base, maybe more, never bothers learning that Micro. And so Ling Bane is kind of not the best for them. And so I wanted to give you guys the option of doing a completely different style that allows you to just bypass the Ling Bane adrenaline game that a lot of people hate and say, hey, here's a different style for you. Even though you're like, but this is the Link Bane Bronze to GM. Shouldn't you be doing it? Just go watch the other one. I've already taught it so many times. I don't want to repeat myself for the 4,000th time on how to do Link Bane Micro. It's just is what it is. Link Bane is king in Diamond ZBZ and people flame me for doing it. Yeah, people, people don't... 
People try to play Ling Bane defensively without control grouping properly, and if they just walled off with Roaches, or if they learnt how to be aggressive with Ling Bane themselves, they'd have a much better time. And those are the two styles that we're teaching. It's either Evo Chamber wall off into big Roach timing, or it's Ling Bane shove. Both are valid, both are fine. Um, in no way does this Bronze to Jam outdate my other Bronze to Jam either. Like, it's just different ways of playing StarCraft. StarCraft's all about finding things you enjoy and then getting better at them, and there's such range you can do. Follow-up question, if I hit you blind in that last game, what would you have done? Yeah, try to pull all the queens together, get them all in the defense key, pull back, make lings, make banes, run drones away, and just avoid fighting until the banelings are ready. Um, if the units separate, you can surround, you can try to get the lings behind the army and cut off the Hellion Marauder Rally, because you'll kill those units easily on their own. And likewise, if the units split up, you can surround one or two Hellbats or, or the Marauders on their own really easily. Whereas... You, you can't fight all the Hellbats together with Lings. It's just a waste of time, right? But, uh, yeah. Yeah, the good old find their three racks and then just win the game. Uh, Phoenix says no random. 2850 Protoss. All right, let's go. Let's do it. All right, go, go. <laughs> all right, what unit do you add if there's a lot of mines? Just oversteers with speed. We don't need to add anything, Moomin. Um, if we do play against enough Widow Mines, like the thing with Widow Mines, just attack elsewhere can help if they've got like way too many, number one. Number two uh, is just learning how to spread our units forward, which we haven't really done yet because it's kind of advanced micro, but it's also not, I really don't think it's the hardest to learn. <laughs> it's just when you A move, you basically just peel your units forward. And as long as you have enough Zerglings in front, they'll usually take them away. Um... And we took some nasty Widow Mine hits in like the very first game. All right, guys, we're playing a ZVP now versus Phoenix. Uh, this should be interesting to see where this one goes. Let's build an Overlord there. Nigel, of course, going in on the other side as well. Let's send this drone to scout when it pops. This Overlord can go in and then just sit out front the natural, ready to sacrifice at four minutes. Trying to get ready and used to that four minute sacrifice. And the thing we realize is four minutes becomes a really crucial time with this matchup, right? And, oh, not this matchup, but this build in general, because four minutes, second gas, Banely Nest, because our two base is saturated. Then we've got to build safety links and Freddy Mercury and send an Overlord in. So something we're gonna try to start doing is we're gonna queue Nigel up to scout a little bit earlier, just so we can get that done before we have this whole flurry of macro activity and all of those things. That's gonna be really, really crucial because we can, if we can queue him to maybe move back and forwards a few times and then run through the base and then get back to focusing on our other tasks, I think that's gonna make things much easier for us. Right, there we go, gas and pool. We're not being proxied. The gateway's at home. That's all we needed to know, as per usual. We're going to build three drones to put on the gas here. People were saying, what, what do you do? What do you add against Widow Mine? They were saying, oh, Ravages. I mean, you can, yeah, you can make two Ravages to kill our Widow Mine, but are you going to, if your opponent has Widow Mines everywhere, are you going to Corrosive Bile twice on every single Widow Mine on the map? No. That's, that's crazy APM intensive. If someone have mass Widow Mines, guys, you just grab a few Banelings and roll them into it. Mass Widow Mines get annihilated. It only takes three Banelings to kill a Widow Mine. So if there's 10 Widow Mines, you just roll it in and go for it. Now, chat's pointing out that we haven't seen an expansion yet. So that's all right. Um, obviously, at 3 minutes 30, we'll be more interested in that. But it's fine. All right. Two Queens and four Zerglings are on the way. Keep building drones. What do we do after the Queens and the Zerglings? We start Ling Speed. Keep on droning here. Once we get to Diamond and pull off this gas, by the way, this build is actually going to become a lot stronger. Pulling off gas here at this moment to get a bit more minerals will boost up the power of the build quite a little bit. For now, though, this does add a bit of simplicity. Just makes it a bit easier. And, um, on this map, we like to mine these minerals open because we want this third base, by the way. Just keep droning up to 32 supply, guys. And then we're going to go for Lizzie. Inject. Cersei, inject. Get Latifah in the house. Get a third Overlord. Oh, sorry. We didn't go third hatchery yet, guys. <gasps> we jumped ahead. We did Latifah in the Overlord a bit early. That's okay. Let's delay the hatchery by a few seconds. But I want you to be strict. If you find yourself starting to get a bit out of order, 
you can actually cross the sort of lines in your head, the strategic lines, and start to do things in a steadily more and more chaotic fashion. So try to be like as strict on yourself as you can in terms of like consistency is king. The more muscle memory you get, the better you're going to get at the game. The more you let yourself deviate in small ways, that's going to flow into you being like just number one chaotic madman later on in the game. So Latifah will spread creep, move to the third. Uh, let's make sure we build another overlord on the top up there and another overlord here. I'm not sure if we built those yet. I don't think we did. And a few more drones building. All right, guys. So this base will be saturated soon. It's almost four minutes. So let's just click the overlord straight through the base and out the back. If they don't have a stalker, let's survive. Lizzie and Jack, Cersei and Jack, build some drones. And what is it time for, guys? Second gas and bailing nest. And what we can do is we can just grab these drones, click them on the gas. That's four, though. So we get one of them on the minerals. We want to build it around a safety zerglings, too. Let's rally these guys down there. Let's look at the other side. What do we see? DT shrine. Ooh, invisible men. Other than that, it's a few different tech trees. So we need detection, but other than that, we can just keep doing our normal thing for now. We don't need to think about that for a while. That'll take a while to finish. Inject, inject, inject. Build a round of safety zerglings. <clears throat> Excuse me. Build a few overlords. <clears throat> and then let's build the detection. So what we want to do, guys, is we're going to build a spore crawler in each base. Okay. That's going to give us detection against the Dark Templar. Okay. Spread our creep tumor. And let's do the next part of the build. Lair. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Where's Freddy Mercury, guys? We're building... Freddy, Mer Freddy and Mercury just started. Lair in the Evo chambers are starting. Time to do another macro cycle. We got a bit distracted by that. Whoa, Adept's here. Okay, build more Zerglings, guys. Pull back. Inject. 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 Oh, God! There's Adept's! All right, what are we going to do, guys? We're going to try and move past and then A-move. Do the same up to the main base as well. Keep building Zergling. A move into the main. Um, look at that. We're taking quite a bit of damage. Really good positioning there in the choke point. So I could micro around the top, but it looks like my lings figured it out themselves. And it looks like we just lost a queen there. So I'm going to just select my hatcheries and queue another queen. And remember there was DTs. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the zerglings up. Some are here on the natural, and I'll build another spore out front so I catch DTs walking in. And some are defending the third. <sighs> what do we do after intense shit, guys? Inject. Macro cycle. Inject. Inject, inject, hold down that drone key, hold down that overlord key. Remember, we don't need to micro at all against the DTs because I set the, the defense up. This base can rally back to the main. Natural needs a few more drones, so we'll take a few of these guys. 1-1 one, one, and Baneling Speed can start up. And we can get the queen there, the queen there, and a queen there, which means this is Freddy and that's Mercury. So there's a lot of just organizing myself after a chaotic push like that. Let's spread some creep there, spread some creep there, and then cue Freddy Mercury back to a safe location. What's our drone count? 45. So let's build three or four drones for there. Let's build a whole bunch of drones for that base. Now we never got our hatcheries up yet, guys, so it's really important for us to go macro hatcheries and then fourth and fifth base, right? So there we go, macro hatcheries go down. Now, obviously, when, when you shut down an attack and you still have a big standing army, it's natural you swap from army production back to drone production. You see people talking about that in chat? and absolutely makes sense. Yeah, inject, inject, inject. A few last drones, and then a lot of overlords. And from here on, it should be nothing but zergings. Now, why am I building a lot of overlords? Because you can see I'm almost supply capped. So there's been a, a real bit of damage that has happened from this chaos my opponents caused. But my opponent should also be very heavily delayed. Now, here's a habit we can make, guys. Send an Overseer to scout. That's something we can start doing the more we play. And most importantly, an Overseer with our army, as well as Overlord Speed. That's going to help us see the DTs. Inject, inject, inject. Build lots of Zerglings. And let's take a fourth base and a fifth base. You can see I don't quite have the money. But this is really good because we can see we're spending our money now, right? We're spending our money really well. We can send some scouts on the map as well. And just kind of see what's going on. Do the deselecting with some lings. And it looks like... Oh, wow. Brennan already has a third up. Holy crap. Fourth base. Fifth base. Oh! Look at that, guys. But I've already got an overseer with my lings, so I can just A-move over here. 
and keep doing my stuff. Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings, build Overlords. Did they kill the Hatchery guys? Oh, no, I, I thought the Hatchery would actually die there. That's all right. Rally over to this base and let's start spreading out creep a little bit more, okay? So we're gonna spread creep there, add a few more tumors. We're gonna go right to left. Beautiful, okay. Let's get 2-2 two -two started. Let's transfer some workers here from the main base over to the fourth. Nothing but building Zerglings, injecting, injecting, injecting. Building Zerglings, building Overlords. And what else? Guys, Freddy Mercury are jack. They've juiced to the gills. Bloody cue some of those injects up. Let's go, Freddy Mercury. All right. Now, I don't really know. Oh, Jesus. Here comes an army, guys. Let's make Banelings. More Zerglings and more Banelings. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. Let's try and pull those guys back a little bit. I'm not ready to fight this at all. We're trying to pull back. I'm trying to run away. Ah! Okay, the Banelings are finished. I'm going to have to fight this, guys. We're just going to have to A move and build more Zerglings. Maybe bring some of these guys from the bottom to the top would be good. Oh! Inject. 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 Build more Zerglings. That was really scary, guys. I was stuck in the mindset of thinking I would be the one who would attack. Now, you might be wondering, why hadn't I attacked it? I was actually about to. But I felt like I had only just got all of my economy set back up. So rather than feeling like I needed to rush myself, and we just went left to right. So that's an example of a bad chaotic system. Right to left, right to left. Try to keep a system. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I was actually about to start thinking about morphing banes and moving across the map for an attack. Um, but I just assumed I would be the one who'd be doing the big next attack after I shut down my opponent's DTs and adepts earlier. So we're building more lings, we're making more banes, guys. And remember, if this attack fails or doesn't quite kill him, we probably should take those the six gas transition where we go to 70 drones and start hive tech and that sort of stuff. Just waiting for these banes to finish morphing, guys. We don't need those, just, just those ones. And here we go. Look at this. Oh, my opponent's in a pretty good defensive Thanks setup, guys. Box. So this is where we can go. Alt, eight. So we're going to split our army to come from two sides. Inject, inject, inject. Build more Zerglings. Build a few more Overlords. And... Let's do it. A move, A move. So I'm A moving the third base from two sides. Apparently they walled off the right side, so everything's coming in from the same side anyway. Oh my god. Oh god, this is this is not what you should ever do, guys. Don't ever attack into Mass Arc on Shield Battery with Ming Bang. I can't believe it's working. This is actually grossing me out, and I'm the one doing it. Oh god. Okay, guys, let's go do that transition. Right, let's, let's click home. This is a really terrible fight. Don't do that at home. That is... An example of the hard counter army. Inject, inject, inject. We're going to build about 15 drones, guys. 15 or 16. Why? Because remember, we're going to go build gases. Build gases. Oh, this queen didn't inject before. Alright, so now we can grab some drones, put on gas. Grab some drones, put on gas. Put a few guys back. Okay, that base seems... Oh, actually, that's... we don't need that. It's running out of minerals as I speak. Put guys on gas. Oh god, he's counterattacking. Oh my god, that's not fair. Let no, you're meant to be defensive. Let me make mainlings, please. Inject, inject. Guys, I think we're dead. Uh oh. Okay, run these drones away. And Oh! Very nice counterattack from my opponent, guys. Alright, let's try and deal with these zealots up there in the top left. Top right. Inject. Inject, inject. Freddy Mercury, you're going to come down here to fight. All I'm doing is making Zerglings, guys. Is 2-2 finished? 2-2's finished. Maybe that's my saving grace. This is insane, guys. Now, the reason I made the mistake of making that attack, guys, is because I want to show you guys what happens the first time you encounter something. Guys, so what's happening? That's DTs. That's what that is. That's DTs. He's got a massive DTs. Let's make some Overseers. This is actually very silly. Let's just run away here for a second. And just make sure, because if we don't ever have Banelings, I feel like Zealots are just too good. Now, we could transfuse there, but we're going to miss it because we're panicking because I'm a Platinum player. Oh, oh, oh. Let's rebuild my third base. I don't even have the money for that. Oh, he's morphing Archons. Oh, that's not fair. Well done. Mass Archon counters Ling Bane pretty hard. He made the wrong upgrades, guys. You're not meant to make armor. You're meant to make shields if you're going Mass Archon. But uh, he's won this game. I mean, we can try to base trade, right? That's what we always say, base trade. Not not in this case. He's got cannon battery everywhere, guys. But you know what? 
We can we can try. For some reason, he's got mass glaive adept. Zealots that are probably better than adepts against this army. But these archons are coming in. That is a hard counter. That is a hard counter if I've ever seen one, guys. All right. Should we throw in the towel, guys? I think we should. I think we should. I think we should give him a party. He's he's worked for it. Ah! 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 GG, well played. All right, very good stuff. All right, so this is an example of someone who just barely got up enough archons to survive. They went for an army that hard counters my army in terms of mass archon counters Ling Bane. How often are you going to run into this on the ladder? Very, very rarely. But it's good to know what counters us. Now, what beats that army? Obviously, we could go Roach Ravager and completely change our style. I'm a big believer in keeping things simple. And I do think we could have, as long as we didn't attack into that wall of Archons, if we just ran away from that, because he had the right side fully walled. He fully walled that, by the way, which is really well done. Um, and we all had to attack from one side. If we defend on Crete with a surround, we can defend that army. And we can go Ultras, and Ultras will do just fine versus Archon Zealot. Um, especially because we have nice upgrades. And so if we went 70 drones up to Ultras, and then we just focused on doing like Ling Bane backstabs as well would be great. But uh, yeah, he just did a really good job of basically doing nothing but Archons. And uh, his army is very weak to Lurkers as well. You can also do Nidus, you could drop in the main. <clears throat> but... I think it's more important to just build the tech that we can aim with. Because more often than not, just backstabbing with Zerglings, like he moves out, I bet you he leaves this wall unattended. And Lings could have just been waiting on the left side, like we were doing in Gold League every game. And they could have been running into the natural, right? Backstabbing as the attack came to hit us, that sort of stuff. So that's something where I haven't really been doing that as much as having my Lings ready to backstab if an attack comes out. Mostly because my opponents have been attacking before we get to that point. But definitely something we can add in. <clears throat> Do you think it's a good idea to recommend Ultras? If Terran Turtle is very odd, Ultras is the easiest way to break it. Yes. Yep, it's in the document. We are adding Ultras as the, the easiest kind of A move way to counter a lot of the things that counter Ling Bane, basically. In a fight, are you better focusing on attacking high value, value units that do more damage, but are tankier or clearing out lesser units first? Too complicated? I don't, I don't, I don't even think of it in that way at all, Mike. I think, I think... I, I don't think about that at all. You'd need to give me a specific scenario. Um, generally, I just want my army to fight well. <clears throat> so, against this army, preferably the Lings are surrounding the Archons and killing them, if they can get on top of them, because the Banelings can wreck the Zealots on their own. Yeah. Was the critical mistake fighting front on with Ling Bane? Check this out. Phoenix actually kept units in the wall, but... Ling Bane rolling into here could have been pretty massive, but I could barely defend this attack and it actually blindsided me anyway. So why was I blindsided by this attack, guys? Up mineral field depleted. It's pretty bad map vision, isn't it? I should have had some Ling spotters out here on the map, shouldn't I? Because if I had even 10 seconds more to prepare for this attack, if I saw it here, I could have made Bane Lings and then this fight would have been much better for me. So this was a big mistake, because if I shut this army down easier, I might have been able to counterattack quicker, get in there before that next round of Archons is there, take a cleaner fight, and just be way better, way better off, right? It was still a good fight for me, and you see how quick Archons die when Zerglings are surrounding them. But, uh... Yeah, could have been even more decisive and been less disruptive to my macro. Now, if I did nothing but made Ling Bane and counterattacked immediately, I think it could have done pretty well, yeah. Yeah. Always going to be tough, though. The other thing is to go infestation. But you go, oh, this guy's massing Archon Zealot. We've already seen now that. Drop an infestation. Go to six gases. Go up to 70 drones. Remember? 70 drones is what we were, we were talking about. We started doing that later, but then he counterattacked too hard. And this fight here was just absolutely god awful, guys. This was the disaster of all disasters. And I said it as I was doing it. I was like, oh, God. You know what's amazing, guys? These forges are just to wall off. Phoenix has two forges that are actually upgrading in the back. Now that makes no sense because for the same money you could just have built two cyber cores, but I'm pretty sure Phoenix was excited and just accidentally built a third and fourth forge. <laughs> and then was like, hey, I might as well upgrade on them instead of these, which actually makes sense. 
Um, Cyber Cores have 300 more total hit points than a Forge for the same cost. But yeah, yeah. so obviously Archons that you can't surround, battery overcharge on them. I might have a lot more supply, but holy shit, is this is the worst possible place I could have fought in there. Oh man. Absolute disaster. We get to see how cost inefficient Ling Bane can be, which is surprisingly not all that cost inefficient. Units lost tab is pretty similar, but it's going to get a lot worse. Because the moment a fight turns and you don't have enough Banelings to deal with the Zealots, the Zealots are going to really help complement those Archons, and uh, that'll cause a lot of problems as well. And really good job, Phoenix multi prong counter attacking right when I was fixing my economy and taking all these gases. If he gave me another minute, I think I would have been able to handle things just fine. And it would have been very hard for him to establish a fourth base. But 13 Zealots warping in. I mean, this was really well done. And I think this is well beyond what you'll actually see in your games. But this is obviously people are watching me play Bronze to GM. They're trying to blind counter me. And I'm all here for it. This is perfect. This is basically showing the worst case scenario. And occasionally you'll get someone on the ladder whose strategy just hard counters your strategy. That's, that's how StarCraft works. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you lose the video game. You don't always win. Who knew? Do we change the style? Well, like I said, just don't attack the Archons, go to Hive, everything else, I'd probably do exactly the same. Way. Oh, as well as have a Zergling and, and a bit better Zergling spotters. The fundamentals answers this. A lot of people always look at this end, they go, well, how to, ah, uh, we've got to play Roaches. We've got to change our entire strategy and skill set because of this one game. And that's the worst mindset, guys. You get emotional, you get frustrated. Just take a deep breath and move to the next step. Is there a specific benchmark of when to go Hive? No, no. It's far too deep in the game. As the game goes deeper, you can't be like, 73 supply, go hive. Because literally in our notes, it's saying, go hive when your opponent is like, you can't finish the game early enough. You're like, ah, oh, I can't finish the game. Go hive, right? Let's go. Okay, we can tech to hive when we add those gases, basically. Um, so you can't have a benchmark for that because depending on how the fighting's gone early on, you know, it's what you can do is you can look at a replay and go, ah, I spotted Mass Zealot Archon at this point. I should have immediately dropped an Infestation Pit. And then I can look at how much downtime there was between Infestation Pit and Hive starting, Hive starting and Ultra Cavern starting, Ultra Cavern finishing and Ultra Upgrades and Ultra Production starting. And then you can say, ah, okay, I was two minutes, three minutes slow. Benchmark against yourself. Don't look for the easy way out and go, oh, I need a, a 10 minute. I should have ultras at 10 minutes. Because it's like, no, that's not how StarCraft works. There's, there could be so much interaction um, and you don't get ultras till 15, 20 minutes. Or there could be no interaction and you decide to go straight to ultras and you've got them out at eight minutes in the game, right? And both of those could still be well-executed ultra transitions. That's what's really important is it doesn't mean one's bad or the other. It's all situational in StarCraft. Is it a good idea to max out for the attack? You should never be waiting for a max out before attacking. You're basically, you're, you're ensuring that your attack timing sucks. Or not sucks, but has no, no reason for it. If you're just waiting for 200 supply before attacking, then, then you've messed up. Now you'll be like, but oh, but Pig, you're, you're attacking at max. That's, I mean, your early attacks, I'm hitting with 1-1 one, one and, and Ling Bane. Yeah, there are some moments where I was maxed, but uh, before going to attack, but I was always trying to attack earlier than that wherever possible. So just keep in mind, uh, yeah, try try to attack earlier. Obviously, if you're maxing out, just because your macro is so overwhelming, you're like, oh, I maxed. Yeah, you should probably go try and trade with your opponent. Just keep that in mind. Um, is it okay if I'm maxed and doing an attack though to go infestation until I have? Yeah, sure, if you want to. You could just take more bases and play pureling Bane still. That's fine as well, but. Uh, yeah, it, it's up to you and what you want to do in StarCraft and what you want to improve on at the time. Like I said, I'm a little bit reticent about teaching the Ultra stuff because I don't think it's... I think it's more often than not uh, not necessary, even to very high levels of play. But it's all up to you, and I like to give people options, so... All right, guys, we're in a ZBT now. We've gone for our Drone Scout. We've got the hatchery down here, and we are now going to go for the gas and the pools there you can replace him and then this drone so you'll notice that these drones pop out look at that i took the gas a little bit earlier this time you might be wondering why well this allows these eggs to immediately start mining when they pop so it's just a very slight optimization from what i was doing previously magic turtle here is going to be going for oh me oh my look at that guys a uh 
A uh, bit of a wall off on the natural. So you know what, guys? I'm actually going to leave the drone behind there. I'm just going to leave this overlord down here. Nigel, ready for uh, the overlord sacrifice. The reason is... If my overlord is just poking it at the front because the barracks is here, usually if the barracks is here, they're building marines and they'll try to kill your overlord. So we're just going to let the drone scout at 3.30 to check if there's an expansion or not. Let's rally to the natural, build two queens and four zerglings. Um, and you could say, I'll just hide on the pillar, but if the barracks is so close, they can lift the barracks to kill your overlord, even on the pervert pillar. We're going to lose the drone anyway, but we see that there's an expansion, so it's done its job. Keep building drones here, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll send this drone to the minerals because that drone never got to come home. And this overlord will just chill back there a little bit on the pillar until he's ready to uh, go in. Let's set up our third camera location. Fourth and fifth. Now, you might be like, hey, pig, what's the difference between high ground and low ground wall? -off? Nothing. It doesn't concern you. Stop overcomplicating things. Focus on your basics. It doesn't matter, they just they just decided to get the wall off on the low ground. It's a bit more vulnerable to certain all-ins, but it's a bit easier to defend their natural. It doesn't really change anything. Make the third. Latifah's gonna queue up. And we get that overlord as well. Alright, back to droning now. Alright, Lizzie inject, Cersei inject. <clears throat> I feel like she's like spitefully injecting every time, you know? I feel like that name. Anyone out there whose actual human name is Cersei or Joffrey has been ruined forever, right? <laughs> there must be like a bunch of names that have been ruined by like movies, right? And like everyone's like, oh, that name is terrible now. Anyway, build a few more overlords. Latifah will spread creep and move over to the third. All right, let's queue up Nigel to go for a scout. We'll go. I'll kind of go through this area because I think there might be tech on the natural, but I also want to scout the main. Lizzie inject, Cersei inject. Build a bunch more drones. And you can see it needs some more overlords. Just make sure we've got these guys going. And should be time for second gas and veinling nest. Remember, we'll grab the drones that are popping out right after doing that to just put them back on gas and minerals. Build a few more drones for the minerals as well. Get these guys on the third. Let's look at our scouting, guys. All right, Marines, tanks. Tanks are a very defensive unit. We'll set up some Zergling scouts on the other side of the map anyway. Just see what's going on. Inject, inject, inject. We didn't really see much of the production, so we can't really read into it at all. So we just keep doing what we do. Oh, this is meant to be Zerglings, guys. Whoops. Okay, that was meant to be Zerglings because I was explaining that. I accidentally built drones. So our next round will be, uh, will be that one. And let's go for Freddy and Mercury building out of these two bases. Let's go double evo, lair. The reason I'm bringing these drones back is just to make things easy for myself. I'm like, oh, I was about to build some structures, so I might as well. Inject, inject, inject. Let's build that big round of zerglings. Oh my god, a massive supply block now as well. So not my most efficient build, guys. We definitely could be doing better than this. We're going to build a whole bunch of overlords, but I already droned pretty hard, so it's not too bad to have zerglings delayed. It's much worse to have your early drones delayed like if i was only on 30 drones and i was supply blocked that's a lot worse let's shift one these new hatcheries let's build some more of those zerglings to round out that round of safety zerglings shift one shift one lizzie inject cersei inject and tifa inject let's go grab freddie mercury shift four shift four creep there creep two on the left another few in the middle and then a few more on the right. They'll probably won't have enough energy to do all that, so we'll have to come back and do it in a little bit. All right, guys, let's build a few more drones here as well, since I had extra lava and I was just a bit broke. That should be enough drones, 56, yep. Let's get 1-1 one, one upgrades. Let's get Bane Speed. And we're just going... Oh, time for another inject. Lizzie inject. Cersei inject. Latifah inject. Build Zerglings. And then build more Overlords. All right, guys, so Freddy and Mercury, let's try and spread some creep. We're just waiting for a bit of energy to get some creep on this right side. Let's do right to left. We can use rapid fire. We can use rapid fire. So we don't really need to spread. Once we want to spread that way, that way, that way, we can't use rapid fire. Just keep that in mind, guys. All right. Inject, inject, inject. 
Freddy and Mercury can put another creep tumor down. Oh, oh no, sorry. You gotta produce, guys. Don't don't break your habits. Keep the macro cycle solid and safe. All right, so I haven't really seen what my opponent's doing. There's no third base. I'm massing units. That's a planetary, guys. You can see because it's got this little turtle head starting to poke out. So our opponent is going mega turtle. So immediately, what do we do? Overseer scout. Check the corners with zerglings. And immediately go, oh, okay. There's two things you can do if your opponent's mega turtling. Kill him or go super greedy. We are going to go for the kill him move, which I usually advise... And sometimes this backfires terribly, and many would argue it's the riskier one. Spread that creep. All I'm doing is building Zerglings here. Sorry, guys, finish the macro cycle. Because I'm talking, I'm, I'm messing up actually on the order. I'll slow down a little bit. Finish your macro cycle before spreading creep, guys. Always. Shift one. Okay. Looks like it's going to be just lots of tanks. Depleted. I don't think there's that many units yet. One, two, three. So there's three siege tanks, four siege tanks, a bunch of widow mines, and building armor upgrades. I'm changing my mind, guys. So how do I know it's building armor? Because the bunker looks different. I click on it, I see that number two. That's building armor. And there's widow mines. There ain't no way I'm attacking into that. Inject, inject, inject. So I built a lot of army. I was about to go mass baneling and go for an attack. Now, what am I going to do, guys? We're going to do the opposite. Planetary, my opponent can never get a third. All I have to do is deny the third, and in the meantime, we're going to hold the drone key down. That's right, guys. As many as we can. Grab half this mineral land, center the fourth, take the gases. The natural, take the gases. The third, take the gases. The fifth, mm, probably don't need those gases. Looks like these hatcheries never got their rally point set. So let's go, rather than going, oh, box them, just go control click on the idle workers. Shift D, select three. Click there. Mineral these guys. Put them on gas. Grab another five or six of these guys. Put them up here. Deselect three. Put them up there. Just take one. Build a bunch more drones. About ten more here. We'll make that sixteen. And a bunch there as well. So what do we just do, guys? We know our opponent can't attack because they're investing everything in static defense. So we can do whatever we want. We can now go infestation pit. Let's inject, inject, inject. Our drone count is at 89. Now I know that sounds crazy for Platinum League, and it is. But if your opponent's just sitting there, why not? We can actually go five base gas as well. Let's even go five base gas. So 10 gases, five bases completely full of drones, and keep expanding. Two more hatcheries, one there, one there, one there. What's our drone count? 99, a few more overlords. Inject, inject, inject. And let's do the Freddy Mercury inject dump on those two hatcheries. Use shift. Send another Overseer to scout, guys. We'll get Overlord speed so that can go faster. Hive. And all we're going to do is make Ling Bang. Now, you can break these rocks down on a lot of maps to make your way through easier. So what you want to do... And attack there, and then there, and then there, and then there. Just to make it easier. Spread some creep. I'll slow down the creep spread. You guys will be a bit slower at this. All right. Inject, inject, inject. Still building nothing but zerglings here while we're waiting for the hive. But as soon as that hive is done, I'm checking on it. I'm saying, okay, note to self. 40 seconds from now, build Ultra Cavern, okay? We're also going to build a spire. Why are we building a spire? Very simple, guys. Because we might need it. Now, let's go grab a bunch of these bane these guys making banelings, guys. He's taking a third. I don't want to let him take that third. So we're going to A move these guys over here. And we're going to make as many banelings as we can. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the banelings on the planetary so they blow it up. Okay? So that's a very technical maneuver. I know you guys are going to struggle with that one. Make A move. Me make click on unit. Do -do -do -do. It's really easy. Because we have so much money, we can do whatever we want. A lot of people say, how do I beat Turtle Terran? And this is the example we didn't get to talk about in gold and a lot of people were asking about. So we're going to just move in and actually click on that planetary so they blow up both of them. Because you see they're going to come from the right. Just click on them, blow up, and then just pull back. And kill the refinery as well if we want, and then shift right click away. Awesome. So we go home. Inject, inject, inject. 
Build Zerglings. And let's build an Ultra Cavern. Remember, Hive's unlocked. So Ultra Cavern's most important. But if you have money to spare, you also go 3-3. Adrenal Glands. You can also get Flyer Weapons. Now I'm worried my opponent might have this base. So we're going to send Zergling there. Deselect. Zergling there. Deselect. Control 2. And let's make more Banelands. Because we let the Planetaries finish. We don't want to let that happen again. Okay. Oh, look at that, guys. Widow Mines. Okay, so let's make a bunch of Overseers. Shift 1. Inject, inject, inject. Make more Zerglings. And let's start transferring workers to these new bases as well. So here's a hot tip, guys, that I like to do personally, which is take a newest unsaturated base, say this guy, and make that my fifth camera base location. So if I go to, say, my fourth, and it's... <laughs> oversaturated and I want to grab say 10 drones or in this case two I can always go to the new base and move drones there. and when this base is full I'll make this base my fifth camera location just makes moving those workers a bit easier let's get the ultra upgrades and we're going to keep making Ling Bane and this is why you guys can see the power of Ling Bane inject 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 is that it blows things up so quickly and even though it's not the most supply efficient our opponent's going to mine out eventually so guys let's let's do a split attack this time Let's do the, what we did in Gold League. I was saying I wanted to do that more. These guys are going to attack from the left and try to kill any army here. Well, these guys are going to do the same blow up the planetary maneuver, okay? Making some more Banelings. And let's go. So click on the planetary command center, guys. The other army is attacking from the other side as well. We're just A moving in. A moving in. And we're going to move these Banelings right into the center. Alright, now there's a new planetary coming in, so we're going to send these Banes in, which just finished morphing. I didn't realize they were still there. And they're going to blow that up. Alright, inject, inject, inject. Ultras. So now we're building Ultras. Zerglings. You can see I'm supply capped on 188. So you have to build a lot of extra Overlords when you're making Overseers like this. So I'm going to build 10. We're going to make 5 more Overseers. And we're also going to make sure that second Ultra upgrade is ready. Yeah. So we're going to have three, three Ultras. We still want to support them with Zerglings. And this is where Vipers, Broodlords, uh, all would be great choices. Nidus Worms. But let's just spread Creep, Inject, and win with the simple stuff, okay? Let's not overcomplicate stuff. So spread Creep left to right. Inject. And you know what, guys? Let's cue those Injects. Cue those injects. Freddy Mercury. Q injects. And let's move forward, guys. We've got 3-3. Three, three. We're going to attack from the left this time and try to catch the army rather than the command center because the ultras are hopefully going to be a surprise. Hopefully our opponent's not ready for it. Now, I don't have a lot of Banelings yet, which is kind of a bummer because Banelings really help with your ultras. So this is not the best way to do this, but we're just going to do it, guys. Just A move. Hopefully the army's still where it was last time. Let's move past. Try to get on top of that army. And you can see that if we just A move then, the Thors will die really quickly. I'm building nothing but Zerglings behind this. And you can see there's Liberators now, which I don't have an answer for. But wait, I have a Spire. So Corruptors, okay? Now, not too many. Just about seven or eight Corruptors. Gonna control click alt three so we're gonna put those guys on alt number three okay the rest of this army is just gonna attack the natural and notice this is all about denying the third his main and natural is gonna be almost mined out my income is absolutely bananas those guys die that's a bit of a bummer okay we'll pull back actually we could kill that we hate widow mines we hate widow mines right guys let's click on that widow mine kill it and then run away <laughs> <laughs> inject, inject, inject. Notice we just got that anchoring habit of injecting. Build another round of ultras. Add them to the key. More zerglings. And let's fix our macro. What do you mean fix your macro? We're checking our bases to see, are they mining out? Do we need gas? You can see I've got a bit more gas than minerals. My work account. So I'm like, okay, I'll take two more gases. Build a few drones. Put them on there. Just check. We've got some idle workers. So we can't, those guys count as idle till the gas is done. So don't use the idle worker button. Yeah, we've still got 94 drones. They all seem to be mining okay. I don't think there's anything to fix here. Just kind of looking around and going, yeah, no, it looks okay. If you were getting harassed at all, you could build spores. We're just going to spread some creep. Getting that highway forward. And 
Uh, we can get Freddy Mercury. Notice we don't have any creep over here, so let's just spam some tumors and then cue them back to safety. And I just tab to the banelings and morph them. Remember, I use my side mouse button for that. And uh, let's go forward now. Now these liberators are going to cause us problems. That's why we'll send the corruptors in first and then the ultras in just behind, okay? So the corruptors are going to go in, but the Thor's shooting them, so let's go for it and let's attack that natural this time. We can split some ultras off here to the third base and just quick those on the planetary. Now if they're mass repairing, what you want to do is you want to move into the mineral line and notice their splash damage is going to kill the SCVs as well as the ultras without you actually having to manually target them, which is really sweet. Now this is where, rather than crying about Turtle Terran and how Ember it is, guys, you can unzip your fly and pee on their face. Now I know that sounds really offensive, but a lot of you I know have trauma at the hands of this style, so I know you want to do this, so I'll do this for all of you. So hats off to Magic Turtle, who honestly was playing a completely fine style that I think would probably net them a crazy amount of wins. I mean, their name is Magic Turtle. I feel like I've cast them before, in like icy fire or something so i think they always do this style if memory serves but definitely unzipping the corruptors fly to pee on the buildings is a nice fun thing to do at the finish of the game cool so the real thing here is recognizing a turtle threat what i just did seems impossible or it seems very easy and there is a disconnect between people's experience playing against turtle and what happened here so i want to take you guys to the crucial point where I recognize. Remember I said, oh, he's going to planetary. That's a big sign of turtle, but I'm still just going to try to kill him because whatever. Look, I'm not going to let him get away with these commands. We're just going to go kill him. But then my overseer came in and I realized the depth of my opponent's depravity. When I saw they had building armor, four tanks, including one on the high ground, layered, spread out in really hard to access positions, multiple widow mines and the building armor upgrade, which means the planetary has five armor. And I was like, yeah, nah, that is a level. There's, there's, there's planetary in the natural, which already is a big enough sign to send you either completely all in or completely greedy. And I initially chose that I'm going to do the big attack and see if I can kill them first and then I'll go for, for plan B if I have to. And I was literally making a big Ling army and then I just went, nope, no, 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 no. And at this point I made a decision to hit a checklist. So let's go over to our uh, our lovely bronze to GM document, guys. And let's talk about it. how the hell do you verse turtle players, man? Um, how to beat turtle, mass battle cruiser, mech, or sky toss. All right, guys, let's bring that in here for plat league. There's a lot of tells there turtling. They expand very slowly, build lots of turrets or cannons, build a PF on any base before their fourth, skip warp gate, go straight to fusion core fleet beacon. Be very aggressive or very greedy. If you're very greedy, you can go straight to six bases, go up to 90 drones and just smashling bane the enemy, denying their bases and never letting get up a third base. Whilst adding corruptors is needed to deal with BCRS, as long as you keep your worker count up, you will have roughly three times the enemy economy and even higher as the base amount. It will feel trivial once you recognize early enough what's happening and drone up hard enough. Yeah. Let's add the ultras to this. Sling bane the enemy, denying their base, never letting them get up a third base. Uh, tech two ultras as well. Um, as they will smash most things that counter Ling Bane, like Archons, Colossus, uh, Mines, and Hellbats. Okay. Add Corruptors as needed to deal with BC, Harass, or Liberated Turtle, etc. Yep. Um, and that's about it. So the thing here is. I recognize this early through scouting. If I didn't recognize this till 10 minutes, I would be in so much trouble or until after I, but because I saw the planetary earlier, that was something I recognized. So it was a small thing, but number one, there was a command center there. And rather than a radar dish poking out, I could see this little, this little head poking out. And I went, oh God, that's a planetary fortress. <laughs> and I'd already seen tanks really early, which is already kind of a sign of a turtling player. And, uh, and I was able to make this read earlier. So I, from here at 54 drones, I'm actually down on workers, even though I'm up on bases. I swap into nothing but economy. And we take gases on five bases. We take a billion hatcheries. We go to 90 drones, start taking towards hive and just keep having an abundance of Ling Bane ready. 
And I think that's pretty straightforward. Do you guys have any questions about it or queries about this style? I'd love to ask. Let's just watch my camera as we uh, we kind of explode economically with zero fear of our opponent because we know all their investment is defensive. Can Rio Platz do 20 Ultralisks at 15 minutes? It was 13. And these questions never make any sense, right? Carl Sang? We get one of these questions every game from Bronze GM, and someone's like, well, can a Platinum do X or Y? And it's like, I don't understand the question, mate. Like, obviously we're teaching you skills on how to beat Platinum players. Can you do this? Yes, anyone can be better. Believe in yourself. Improve, focus, practice, fight hard. You guys can fucking do it. You can do more than you think you can do. Get out there and practice. <clears throat> I mean, there is nothing disrupting anything you're doing right we we took like minutes and minutes doing nothing but droning for two two minutes taking gases <clears throat> and then we just made ling bane while taking dolchers and it wasn't perfect I, if you do it a bit slower you could still absolutely win pig why no infestors says box you tell me why should we build infestors box so StarCraft is a game of unlimited options. So the question would be, why would you build Infestors here? And I would say, well, they've got tanks, turrets, planetaries. Infestor can't do anything against most of those. If you can, if you can catch the tanks out, it's kind of nice, but there's nothing to fungal. Microbial Shroud will do nothing. So you've got a very expensive on the gas spellcaster unit. Very complicated to use, very hard for a Platinum player to use. And you don't have the key situation for it, which would be mass marines attacking into you, which is where fungal becomes really good. Muters only should be good against mass turret with building armor upgrade and high sec auto tracking and Thor's on the way. That's a dicey one. Muter swaps can catch mech players, but a mega turtle mech player like this is usually going to build so many missile turrets. So I, I would not rely on it. You could definitely go swarmos. Swarmos makes sense. You can go like 30 swarmos for sure. If they turtle and go mass air, a corrupt is good enough? Yeah, yeah, corruptors beat DCs really hard, and they'll do okay versus everything else. Yeah. So I meant to get in here before the planetary was finished, guys, to make that easier for myself. But you can see how how good Ling Bane is. Yeah, AoE slow because your opponent's just sitting there. Fungal's not really gonna do anything. You definitely can neural parasite the Thors, but Spellcast is a very technical and hard to make work, especially if your opponent's just defending. If he's pushing into you, Infestors becomes a bit more viable. But as we saw, you don't really need it. Infestors are amazing. Vipers are amazing versus mech. Swarmers are amazing. But uh, we're keeping it really simple to more of a one-size-fits-all solution right now. And Ultras is just that. Infestors is a very fancy piece of the puzzle, which you guys can absolutely use. And it's never too early to get good with Spellcasters. But in my experience, most players fumble with spellcasters really badly until about Diamond 1. Um, so I try to I try to avoid focusing too hard on spellcasters until a bit higher up in the ladder. Yeah. It's a decent idea. Versus Mass Thor especially. If you can neural those Thors, you'll wreck them. You'll wreck them. But if tanks are in range and they've got detection, infestors can die real fast. Yeah, Contaminate Game Changer. Yeah, Rainer has uh, has done a few Contaminate all-ins. Um, back in the Void Ray meta, he would Contaminate the Robo to stop their Disruptors getting out while doing a Queen Walk. It was a really cool build. Did it a few times on Black Zone. Yeah. If it's past four minutes and no natural, should I expect that it's a turtle or that an attack will come soon? Those are exact opposite. Three minutes thirty. Dark matter. Look at look look at the notes, my friend. All all material I've ever taught with bronze to GM is always if they if they don't have an expansion at three thirty, swap to army production. Make your defensive tech structure, bane nest or roach horn, depending on your style. Spore in each base in case it is invisible or, or air units, and try to scout their units. Get those link scouts, overlord sacrifice. Try to actually see what the hell is going on. Try to actually confirm what it is. But by default, you've already got a big economic lead because you're two bases versus one base. You'll be on over 30 drones. They're only on at most 22. And you've got your defense. This is such a fundamental, basic piece I've taught in all my Bronze to GMs. And I've coached Diamond players who I regularly coach who still forget this because they haven't played against a one base play in like a month. 
they just never run into it unless it's like a proxy all in and then they just play it and they just everyone just they just like they're just like oh what do i do and i'm like come on basic checklist for one base all ins guys yeah people i play don't hit those times most of the time uh change it to four minutes then yeah easy peasy easy peasy adjustment but i mean if you're if yeah and and just just scout but you'll be fine i mean the thing is if your opponents are literally so late on things that like none of the timings apply just react to nothing just go just go effing kill them with like the one one link bane or the roach style is even easier the roach speed attack and just get yourself some nice easy wins um and you'd be amazed how well that goes yeah all right guys we're playing another zerg versus terran versus just shy of 3k mmr in legoland Let's send Nigel to the other side of the map and then back to the scouting location. Let's build his buddy here to go down here and then sit outside our natural expansion. We can set up the camera location. We've got another drone that goes for a scout and then clicks back home. Third base. Fourth base. Fifth base. Hold the drone key down. Rally point down here as well. <coughs> excuse me guys just doing a giant burp there as we go for the expansion so nothing too crazy this game uh zbt we're just trying to work on these skills one of the interesting things is we've been hit by so many attacks today and now also in that last game in mega turtle style it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm looking at it and i'm like okay one thing is because we've been hit by so many attacks and pressures my macro hatches have been delayed also because of course freddy mercury is late and we see the barracks is at home that's all we need to know guys spawning pool immediately notice we rally those eggs one to take the gas one to take the pool and that times out really nicely but yeah i definitely it's something where you can kind of see how skipping freddy mercury gives you a bit of minerals to get the upgrades and the hatcheries going faster but obviously you are a bit more vulnerable to air harass and not having those queens which really came in handy a few times defending against zealots and things like that uh they would have been more handy if we actually transfused them in fights which i've been very decidedly not doing because i've i've cast enough low level games to know that players really don't consistently land their transfuses until like diamond two is where people start like pretty regularly transfusing almost almost always um uh obviously everyone even at pro level misses transfuses sometimes but just trying to make sure i don't you know do things too quickly let's build four links control two guys build a few more drones just tapping hatchery sd hatchery select lava build drone hatchery select lava build drone starling speed hatchery select lava build drone that early tapping to get every drone out as early as possible very important guys now we want to go take the third so let's do that we're just going to chase the reaper off to protect the drone and then you want to pull back on the creep here so that you can get out of there just fine keep building drones don't change the build at all guys 32 lizzie injects cersei injects cersei can defend the base and oh. okay get the third base third hatchery shift one set the rally point double tap one remake the camera location latif is on the way and we're going to build one more overlord down here as well which we'll click down here to get that forward vision so we'll go out there you can go out here i really like to have that vision far out front the base as much as possible all right guys lizzie inject cersei inject let's hold that worker key down workers 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 tap 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 and we'll need a few more overlords after those workers right we always go overlord on the top of the map to spot drops coming there overlord on the bottom of the map spot drops coming there and let's queue this guy to move back and forwards a bit and then go through remember i wanted to queue the overlord scout earlier so i remember to do it before we get busy building mainly now second gas and all this other stuff that's about to come down let's go guys lizzie and jack cersei and jack latifah is not ready yet we can kill this reaper now it's distracting i'm building drones by the way building overlords oh we can get some damage done but probably not best to fight them all right guys let's build uh two queens freddy and mercury from the natural and the third let's put these drones back up here and take the second gas in the veiling nest we were a bit distracted but i said hey there's a bunch of drones in front of me i can just box them might as well do it 
inject, 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 and big round of safety zerglings, which is especially important in this game because those hellions are around. So there's a lot of games I've been building these safety zerglings and haven't really needed them till, unless a big attack hit me later. This game might be the exception. Okay, guys, so what have we seen? Natural, third. So three commands and his big signs of greed. Starport plus factory, which means invisible units, battlecruisers, banshees could be coming in. So we will react with just a spore crawler in each base. Other than that, keep doing the bit. Inject, inject, inject. Hold the drone key down. So many drones, so many overlords. And Freddy, drop a creep tumor. Mercury, get over here, drop a creep tumor. Spread that creep tumor. Let's do the next part of the build. Double Evo chamber and lair. We can grab those three guys and put them back on that gas there. So that base is pretty much saturated. If we want though, we can build three or four more drones because we know we still have to build the hatcheries, right guys? Inject, inject, inject. <gasps> Hold that drone key down. Well, no, not really. We only need a few, but we need to set this rally point there. So let's grab about eight of these workers, maybe a few more, send them there. And we can maybe just build a couple more there as well. A few more overlords. Rally to the back. Freddy and Mercury. Spread some creeps. Oh! Whoa! A move Zerglings, guys! A move Zerglings! A move Freddy Mercury over here as well. Pull the Zerglings back, because if they're clumped up and you're chasing into them, you can be in big trouble. Let's pull Latifa back as well. We're going to build a new Latifa, and she's going to join Freddy Mercury. We aim move the queens and the lings. What are we building? Nothing but more zinglings. Right? You're, you're in a chaotic situation like this. I landed a transfuse! That's the first transfuse we've landed in this show. Let's build a spore crawler connecting the bases. And let's take a deep breath. What do we do after defending? Macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. Spread creep. Oh, sorry. No, don't spread creep. What are you doing? Build zerglings, dude. Keep building zerglings. We've got the work account we need. Baneling speed, 1-1. One, one. Macro hatch, fourth base, and fifth base all in one go. Remember, if you get busy fighting, you and your opponent are both banking money. If you can, in one action like that, build four hatcheries and spend your bank, you're going to spend that bank immediately. Your opponent is going to be fumbling, ah, fat fingering their buttons, panicking, freaking out, all that sort of stuff. Inject, inject, inject. Oh, that's actually Latifah. That's the new Latifah. She this <laughs> getting my, uh, my queens confused. A few creep tumors there. Spread some more tumors up here as well. So notice we're, we're just getting lots of tumors on every side of the map, and then we're queuing them back. Behind. Inject, inject, inject. Lots and lots of zerglings building, and more overlords. Now, we've got these hatcheries added to the control group. Let's add that one, and that one, and let's rally down to that base. Let's also get some map vision, guys. We've been on the back foot, but we've killed all of those Hellions, so we should be able to get out there. We're just doing the deselect, ignoring that attack command on the minimap. And we go, oh, Banshee's here. Okay. So let's move this four crawler over. We should actually have an Overseer now, so let's make an Overseer. Shift four. So it's Freddy, Mercury, and their bases coming over here. And they've got an Overseer. Transfuse as well. Inject, inject, inject. Now this is the point where normally you'd queue injects with Freddy Mercury, but they've only got one inject because they've actually been doing a lot of transfusing this game. That's okay. Spread creep, spread creep, spread creep. That high scroll speed is real nice if you're not going too far for doing that. Now let's send an overseer through and just check what my opponent's army is. Always good to send an overseer scout whenever you're just chilling. Send these guys over to the fourth. Recenter that camera location. See, they're all perfectly centered. If I just jump between, my mouse cursor is in the exact middle. Inject, inject, inject. All right, build zerglings, and guess what? One one and bailing speed are done. We've finally been recovering a little bit, so let's move forwards and let's blow this base up, okay? And hopefully win the game. Spread creep on the bottom, and then scroll on up here. And we're not rapid firing because we want to spread on two different lanes. So remember, only rapid fire if you're just spreading in one direction. Oh, look at that, guys. All right, I'm going to send my queens up here to help defend. What I'm doing is I just built a round of Zerglings, and we're going to go Alt-8, my back, or actually Alt-3, my backstab key. 
So we're going to send the queens up here and those guys, and then these guys are going to aim move the front. We need overlords. And we're not even going to watch this. We're just going to say, ah, oh, too much is going on right now. Run away, run away, run away. So we're going to send our Zergling key to try and defend. We're going to try and move these guys in. All of our focus is on defense, and that's totally okay. We're adding more Zerglings to three, our backstab key. Hopefully our main army's doing well, but you've got to make a choice about what you focus on, guys. If you chose to focus on the army there, that's okay. But I feel like Ling Bane usually does okay with an A-move. Let's inject, inject, inject. Oh! Turns out our army did well. That's nice. Turns out, yes, we've defended the Hellion Banshee. And our army did very well. We took a little bit of drone damage. I would have been building another eight drones here. And then maybe building some more drones as well. Um, maybe starting 2-2. Two, two. These sort of things. Rejoining the army at some point. But when multitasking happens, you have to make a judgment call. And that's what we just did there. Because you can only ever micro one thing at once. Now we could have pulled our whole army home and defended. And that would have been okay. But I already felt my attack was late. Because one one finished a while ago. Remember, we were hitting at like 8 minutes, 8.30 a lot of the time in Gold League. We're hitting so much later. And don't get me wrong, there's more fighting going on, more things we're defending. But my one one had already been ready for quite some time. I felt like I was just so busy getting all my macro set up that I didn't really have time to go across the map. So if I now pull home for a drop and send it home and give my opponent a minute to spread out siege tanks and widow mines and bunkers and whatever else, I just felt like, ah... Oh, Am I ever really going to be able to... Like, my attack's going to become bad. Because, and you can see in the work count, my opponent's on 73 workers. I'm only on 54. They've got 2-2 two, two on the way. Almost finished. Mine hasn't started. If I didn't attack soon, gave them another minute to get all defended, definitely could have caused me some problems. So, it was good choice there. I kind of A-moved those units in. And I was adding to my secondary army key, as well as sending the Freddie Mercury Q, uh, crew up in the main to help defend. And we kind of just A moved, and notice the lings were all getting stuck, so they weren't doing much. But once we moved them in, and they actually surround the units, they did very well. But luckily for me, combat shield wasn't finished. And the ling bane just kind of rolled over everything. And it worked out a okay. What angle is my keyboard on? Mine's like really slight, maybe 12 degrees. I don't have a protractor. It's very, very low, like 15 degrees maybe. When I first started learning it, I used more, but I found I didn't, didn't need it. And I know, I know you're meant to use a bit of a bigger one, but I just found this works for me, a very slight one. I don't, I don't necessarily use the core properly, so, yeah. I also use a different version that uses the list key to the left of, uh, shift and control. So I've, I've, I've got, like, I've got to modify my keyboard setup. I, I, people, a lot of people have been asking me about the core, and I'm like, I kind of regret even talking about it, because... For most people, standard hotkeys are great, man. Standard hotkeys are fantastic for most players. Core is like learning really technical basketball shooting techniques as well as tasty. Not necessarily at all. It can save you unneeded stress on your arms. It can be really good if you're a hardcore person with thousands of hours in. Yeah. Thanks for the Bezos box. I don't have a lot of room on my desk. Yeah, you definitely have room for this. This is like very slight. <laughs> Um, you missed the panic spam all your lava into lings. <laughs> well, we did make lings reactively, right? Our opponent attacks us. We always swap track from workers to army. That's something we just do every single time. All right, guys, we're going into another Zerg versus Zerg here. So uh, let's take a little look-see and see how we go. All right. Now, remember, we want to go 17 pool with our ZVZ build because we're skipping the gas. This is also going to keep you really safe. Look at that, did you see that guys? I just doubled that worker up and immediately ruined it by pulling one of them off. So the doubling up of workers is something you guys can start to pay attention to whenever you feel like, we'll probably focus on it mostly in diamond and masters, I would imagine. 
But the idea is making sure that you've got buddies on each pocket, right? So you see this one only had one, so we line it up so they mine. And that way you've got two workers on each patch. And it's much better because otherwise you might end up with just one worker on a patch. Oh, the accident went pool first instead of hatch first, guys. Which is going to save my bacon because I'm getting all in. Oh, God. I, I didn't even realize I went I went pool before hatch this game. And that's kind of annoying. I, oh, man. This would have been a perfect example of, of what to do. Um, you know what, guys? I'm not going to use it for a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build... A lot more drones and we're gonna not start queens straight away to make this more so this is gonna be very similar to a normal response okay building an overlord building oh god there's lings coming oh my okay now i'll start a queen and we're gonna build a spine there and a spine here so we're gonna build two spines um and we're gonna start building zerglings and queens non-stop and we're gonna try to defend the expansion now, this is a very specific scenario. There's gas and pool, which means it's one base Ling Bane. This is basically an all-in attack, okay? Now, pulling drones to defend is technically what you'll find is not the right way to defend this. But I'm a Chad gamer who defends this way, and I encourage all of you to, even though a pro gamer will tell you this is the wrong response, okay? And we'll get to explaining why in the replay afterwards. All right, let's move down. Let's build another queen. Let's move that spine down as well. Move the lings back. Fight with the queen. Oh, get out of the way. Let the spine down. All right. Keep building queens and zerglings. Try to get these queens on the ramp if we can. Building lots and lots of zerglings. Those spines are too close where they could both get killed by the same unit. All right. We're going to keep building queens here. And what we're going to do is send a few lings forward. Most of them. I knew I'd forget my failingness! Oh no! That's why the failings weren't making it better. Alright guys, we're gonna we're gonna rematch immediately with Pastel. Okay guys, so we're gonna go in here again and try it one more time. And obviously I know what's coming, and some of you will be like, oh, but you know, guys, I I often can tell what's happening and I still keep playing as if I don't know what's happening. It's okay, I'm experienced enough at this game to emulate it. So basically, um, the way we respond here is not optimal. He says, Lambo's actually taught the build, but I drive it like a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> That's all right. Most people will, will mess up their builds really bad until you get to quite a high level on the ladder. All right. So we're going to drone scout and then come home, which is going to give us plenty of warning this is happening, which is awesome. It's a big part of what makes defending this much easier is that we are going to go for that. And um, essentially, yeah. Notice how we've got three workers on that patch is what I was talking about. So take one of those off. And just keep spamming clicks until he starts stays mining on a different patch. And that's just going to give you way better uh, income. This guy can go down here. Let's set up our third camera location, our fourth, and our fifth. So like I was saying, uh, we're going to stick to a gasless response. And I think even if you were planning to go gas, this is one of the easiest responses to learn. Because you don't have to juggle gas and minerals. Whereas the technical defense for one base Ling Bane in involves Danelings and Spines and Queens and Zerglings. It gets to be a little bit too much. Now, normally we'd go 17 pool here. I've accidentally gone to 18 supply. My pool's one supply later. This is still safer than going for an 18 gas 17 pool. Thank you so much for the tip, by the way. Brainless. No worries, mate. Your, your tip is bigger than mine. For some reason, that got cut off. I don't know why, but it did, and that's hilarious. Now, my drone, I didn't actually stop to check. Wait, what's going on? There's no expansion. So we've got to get in there. We see lings. If we can confirm there's a gas, then we know what's happening, guys. Build another overlord on 19. And okay, yeah, that's a one base ling bane. So we can send this drone home. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab mm, about nine drones on a control group. And we're going to save lava. And all we're going to do is uh, basically build spine. So what we're going to do, this spine might die. So we're going to build a safety spine here. And then an, a spine there as soon as this is finish this pool so we're gonna go queens zerglings so one queen two zerglings we're gonna build two spines and we'll start another queen that's gonna have to cancel straight away we had to cancel it because he came in if he comes into the main like i said we'll have to cancel it but if he comes in the main we don't have to send drones whereas if he was attacking the hatchery we'd have to send drones but because he didn't come in we don't need to so we can try to fight with our zerglings and anytime you're fighting with anything close to even numbers that's good Build that second spine that we were talking about before. We didn't get to do it. And we're just going to trade with anything we get. And even if these guys all die to a Baneling, that's fine. 
Just keep building Zerglings, rally to the ramp, and get your queens on the ramp, okay? And you want to be on the bottom of the ramp where the creepers, so you can transfuse. Now, if you can get, get on the ramp, get on the ramp. Remember, hold position queens on the ramp is basically it. So you hold position, and then we can move our spines down there, okay, guys? And just keep building queens. Bonus points if you can spread your Zerglings out. Notice the queen, we move her in and out of the door. And then you move her up, hold position. And if you just root that there, that's going to protect the hatchery. Small tips matter. Going to build a few more lings because we're still feeling really paranoid. This overlord will come in, see if there's an expansion. And I feel pretty safe right now because we have two spines, right? So we get another spine over there as well. We'll let that one up. And he's basically like, okay, no problem, that should do. And we just go back to our build from here. Inject, inject, drone, drone, drone. Because we've heard more way ahead. Cool. So with the ZVZ build, remember, we aren't going gas. We go 17 hatch, 17 pool, which naturally keeps you much safer against these sort of timings. I built it on 18, which is a mistake, but I'm still getting it 25 minerals earlier than if I went 18 gas, 17 pool, right? Because I'd have to build the extractor. Still not the fastest pool because we've gone for a drone scout timing. But remember, this is the order for defending Ling Bane. Queens and Lings as much as possible as soon as the pool finishes, and then drop a spine there and a spine there. Now, I actually went for the spines before the queen on the natural started. I think let's just start the queens and then build the spines. It's probably more solid because getting queens on the ramp is the priority. Okay, check it out guys. 12 pool, proxy racks, proxy gates. There's a really generic response. Build queens and lings and build two spines. Oh, wait, the initial response actually is already good. It's a one size fits all, it is. But let's also talk about the, the details here a little bit, okay? One base sling bang. Also known as 1312. 1312. This is commonly called 1312, referring to the 13 gas and 12 spawning pool. It is super all in. And something you'll eventually run into a fair bit as you move up the ladder. Okay? Why do pros prefer not to pull drones? So if it's 12 pool with no gas, they will pull drones to defend the hatchery. But the thing is a top level pro will micro their lings in and out and not fight and then just kill you with bane lings and you've wasted too much mining. Because with the ling bane all in, it's not really about killing your expansion. It's more about getting in your main and just killing all your drones. And if you waste too much mineral time, you can't get up spines. They'll, at pro level, they'll surround your queen your queens before they get to the ramp there's a whole bunch of shit that goes down at pro level people never surround your queens in time until you get to at least diamond one and even then they still usually even in g low gm they still mess it up so it's it's actually crazy how often you can just defend with this but anyways um so basically standard response is uh, you know make non-stop queens uh make you know two queens and non-stop lings as soon as you see as soon as you can, uh, you know, stop droning on 19, that sort of thing, so you can do it. Uh, skip 19 Overlord. So uh, if you scout early enough, right? So that's something which I missed this game, okay? Okay, uh, we scouted this at like a minute 20. We easily could have stopped building the Overlord because I had to send the drone back in, I'd already started it. So this Overlord is 100 minerals. That's why I couldn't afford spines and queens at the same time, okay guys? Make two queens two spines one on edge of creep might need to cancel if they come in main that's okay this way it can reinforce natural slash help queens on ramp much faster one in main base to ensure it gets off um basically the priority is just surviving but if they target the natural, we will pull 10 drones, 
plus our lings to defend and then send the drones back to the main and try to spread lings versus banes move spines to ramp plus block ramp with queens if we can if we can get there in time Okay, so that's the whole response. Now let's actually look at what I did and take a little look-see, guys. So here's the point where the spine crawler got cancelled. Notice I couldn't start that queen straight away. That's all because this overlord is out. And remember, I just you don't need 13 free supply. Here. The hatchery will finish and unsupply block you because it gives you 6 supply. So we can be at 28 supply, 23 out of 28, 25 out of 28 is just fine. So you might think this is really bad, but as long as you don't lose the spine, you just cancel it, save the minerals, those lings aren't attacking the hatchery. And if they're not attacking the hatchery, it means you get to mine a lot more minerals. Whereas if they're attacking the hatchery, you have to pull those 10 drones down, which loses you a lot of minerals, which makes things harder. Now, your opponent wants to get damage, mess up your mining, and then they want to get a surround on your queens before they can get on the ramp with the zerglings, while the banelings stop your zerglings from engaging. Now, my opponent makes a big mistake here, Pastel. Pastel basically doesn't control group the units correctly. Pastel's trying to already separate the Zergling from the Baneling key really early, but also didn't actually build, um, didn't build a queen. So they're trying to do like the fastest possible, most aggressive version. I would say generally, this can work, but it's a, it's a little tough and you can tell they missed production because lings should be spaced that far apart roughly if you're building them constantly, which means there should be two lings here, two lings here. But that's not the case, which means they missed building. So their reinforce is even weaker than normal. And then they leave these two lings over here, which is free kills me. And every zergling is sacred with this because they need enough lings to surround a queen, kill it, surround a queen, kill it. And then like three bane lings will hold off all my zerglings. And then they need to try and kill all my drones. It's incredibly, incredibly hard. People are saying in chat, don't you skip ling speed to have more banelings? Ah, uh, it's like a real noob killer. That probably works really well up to diamond one because people just don't know how to spread drones properly, but people can counter that just by spreading their units out. Yeah, that's that's really bad. <laughs> that's a really bad build. Um, I would I would think that's pretty terrible, but who knows? You know, you could probably beat a GM or even a pro gamer the first time they see it. That's a cute idea, Aldi. It's a cute idea. Usually usually you do go link speed with this, though, because it allows you to maneuver. But basically, he lost all of his Zerglings there in an even Zergling fight. You need to wait for the Banelings. Lose no Zerglings. Pull back. Banelings blow up all my... Z One Baneling kills all six, seven, eight of my Zerglings, and then he runs in, surrounds this queen, surrounds that queen, and just runs around isolating my units and killing them with like 12 lings fighting two or three lings at a time. 12 lings surrounding a queen. But you've got to get a lot done because one hatchery with no queen producing, which is the price you pay to hit this as fast as possible, is really hard to execute. You need to make sure every zergling never takes a fight that's anything close to even. And just by building queens and zerglings, until you get to a very high skill level, constantly building queens and zerglings will usually defend this. Yeah, because your opponents aren't going to be good enough at picking fights. Cool. Actually, I guess we can keep watching for a sec. We get murdered in 2v2. I play Toss, he plays Terran. When we play against Zerg, we get murdered. Any pointers? Uh, come up with a planned timing attack. You do a one base marine tank. And he does a one base four gate and you push with, I don't know, a medevac, 12 marines, 14 marines, two siege tanks. And uh, he makes four gate zealot stalker and you go kill him. In general, in 2v2, just sync up and you'll win. And at pro level, what cheese do you find the hardest to deal with defend with your zerg? The one I don't see coming. Ah, uh, it varies. It, it really is. It's just whatever you're not, whatever you're not aware of, whatever you're not ready for. Yeah, it, it changes all the time. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's like one build that's always been the toughest. Question about Baneling AI. Why don't they auto attack buildings? Because it would 90% of the time be a terrible choice box. Yeah. Yeah, it would be really bad. There are times when you want to blow up buildings, but it's very rare. Pig, what do you think about 3 hatchery, 30 drone Baneling aggression? It's better if you do it off about 25 drones. 
But uh, that's what I actually heavily advocate in my aggression is the key uh, series of guides. So yeah. Taco. Oh, Taco is pastel. Taco says, I got this from Lambo's free MMR Friday. Based on the idea that most people just won't respond correctly. Yeah, you need to um, you need to just make sure you build a habit of as you're running forward, keep building lings and don't stress so much over harassing with the lings early. Go in the main, try to waste a bit of mining time, pull back, join with your morphing bane lings and then go in and that's when you should really focus on the front. So you were just getting a bit excited. You just need more reps with it and you'll be able to execute that so much better, my dude. Uh, back on that question, hardest all ins to defend. Um, really well microed marine proxy three racks is very difficult to deal with. All right, guys, we're playing another ZVT. Lots of Terrans coming out of the woodwork. I do feel Terran is a very highly played race in the lower leagues because making man with gun uh, is very familiar. The mechanics, I think, are very familiar from a lot of other RTSs. So it kind of makes sense that there is a lot of Terran players out there. We're playing, I think they're 2750 MMR. Their name is Double Garian. Um, and let's see how they go. Let's send that drone across the map. Queue at home. Uh, this overlord can sit outside our base. Nigel, make sure he's queued in, but then also back to relative safety. And I just built an 18th drone, guys. So we're going to be taking this hatchery one supply late. Not the end of the world. Oh, shh! Okay, I was actually... I, I was requesting people do this to throw me off my build. Okay, guys, if your hatchery gets blocked, go take a third immediately and continue your build, okay? Continue your build. So I built a few extra... I built an extra drone while waiting there, guys. And now we can go gas. We can go pool. I asked earlier, I was like, oh, no one's blocked me yet. This is really disruptive and I really should want to practice against this. And then I completely forgot, just because no one's done it. And this is a big problem for a lot of players. They get really stressed out here. I'm going to tell you guys, it just takes practice. And the more you practice against this block, the better. Um, the the more you, you, you practice, um, the better. The fact that I went down already late with my drone for an 18 hatch makes this worse. The main thing here is just to put extra focus into your basics. It's so funny how shocking that is because everyone's just been so passive with nothing but like worker scouts up to now. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn, this is actually really disruptive. So you're going to have to inject and then third base. And it's okay if you just are used to doing it your normal way. So you jump main, natural, then third. That's okay. I still have this as my natural and this is my third base. And I know that's going to do some people's heads in where you're going to be like, what? This feels so unnatural. What the hell, man? But don't worry about it. We've got four links on the way. We're rallying to the third. We're making link speed just extra focus on following the normal order. We built two queens and four links. Make link speed. Keep making drones. Uh, send a drone to the natural here to build that expansion in a little bit. Links can clear up the eBay and they can just hang out in between my bases, defending, doing normal stuff. Overlord's just going to confirm there's an expansion. Lizzie inject. And you know what? We're going to build... This is gonna, she's gonna become Latifa. Small adjustment, and new Lizzie's gonna get built. And we're just gonna spread creep from there down to connect these bases. Wait, that's, no, 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 no. That's advanced shit, don't do it. Build the hatchery. We've already injected two. Okay, now build Latifa. Now build an extra overlord. You see, I, I just made it over -complic. I did. I started doing like a kind of pro response thing, move these overlords out, and that makes things way too fancy, okay? So don't do that. Inject. Now, if you want, you could just wait for this inject to pop before doing this, guys. It's not a bad way to do things. Because then your injects can be synced up. Whereas right now, you see they're desynced. That's really awkward, isn't it? So this is actually totally valid. On my next macro cycle, I'm actually going to wait. Pull my links back. We're not going to inject when this queen hits 25 energy. We're going to wait until this one's done. Purposely to simplify things for our low APM. Now, Latifah's going to move down there, spread some creep. I want to inject it. We're restraining ourselves, guys. We're restraining it. Hold it in. Let's send Nigel through the base. We'll look at that later. Okay, it should be time now. Inject, inject, inject. Lots of drones. Uh, a few extra overlords. Second gas and Baneling Nass. These drones, we can just control click those eggs and just click them here. On the gas, one there. Put a few more drones for the minerals. You guys know the drill. Our and we want to, of course, grab a few drones from the third. 
and rally back to the natural, which we normally do at this point, remember? And we see, looks pretty standard, guys. Nothing too crazy out there. Just keep following the build. Inject, inject, inject. Build a big round of safety zerglings like we always do at this point. <clears throat> Freddy and Mercury are going to start up. We can spread this creep down from our main. Very important to connect your bases in this scenario. And our zerglings are just going to hang. A few more overlords in the back. Let's go double evo. And lair? Or lair? As people say in America. Okay, here comes a big attack. Let's surround these guys. Uh, even better is if you move past and then a move. I guess that allowed us to get a bit of a surround. But I'll pull back. I don't want to chase because they clump up when they chase. Inject, inject, inject. And we're going to build lots of drones to fully saturate that base. Now, once again, guys, move past and then a move. Good duke. You change directions. Up to a pretty high level, you can A move and you'll probably be decently efficient, but you never know what you're going into. So let's rein it in. Now we saw a starport, so they could be like liberators or banshees or anything. So we'll build spore crawlers. We don't know what that's building. Could be a medevac, could be a viking. You never know. Let's go double macro hatchery here. And let's check our saturation. 16, 16, 16. So you can see we're missing a few. Oh, okay. Run away. Remember guys, step one when you see a liberator is run away. Step two is position the queen. And then we'll send the workers back to mining if we see them on siege like that. These guys can come over here as well. And these guys are going to just move there. And these guys can move there. Alright. Alright, we're going to build some more drones. Try to get back to macro, actually, is more important right now. Oh, hello. Alright, we were very distracted. Inject, inject, inject. Build zerglings. Build overlords. Melee, carapace, baneling speed. Control click hatcheries, shift one. Let's build a few more drones here, because we're about to steal those drones and build a fourth and a fifth base. And now, send lings, deselect. Send ling, deselect. Send lings, deselect. Send lings, deselect. Send lings, deselect. Send lings, deselect. And also, hey, move this guy. So I don't want you to have map vision. I'm Zerg, I get to have map vision, not you. Inject, 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 build Zerglings. Now notice Freddy and Mercury took the back seat, guys. You might be like, whoa, why? You, you messed up. If we had more APM, that would absolutely be a mess up. But we had to deal with Hellion run by, Liberator attack while macroing, and macro took priority. Now that we're in control of the game, this is where a lot of Zergs get antsy and go, oh, what's he doing? What do I do? And they start really tunnel visioning on random features of the game. Instead, we're going to make some veins. We're going to keep up our macro cycles. Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings. We'll use Freddy Mercury. Queue up some injects here on these bases. And we'll just keep spreading creep. The more we spread creep, the more we macro, the better this is for us. Shift one. Shift one. Make sure all the hatcheries are rallied to that base. This is great, guys. And look, this base is already mining out, so let's just grab half the workers from there now, send them to the fourth. You might be like, but it's 9 out of 14, but these mineral patches are going to run out soon anyway, so I might as well just pull the drones off ahead of time while nothing else is happening, because I'm not going to remember to do that once the fighting start. Inject, inject, inject. Build zerglings. Are our upgrades done, guys? Almost. Okay, cool. And it looks like he just moved out to take a third, so this is perfect for us. Let's make an overseer. Why? Because everyone keeps making Widow Mines today, guys. It's like they've been watching that I'm maxing Ling Bane or something. I don't know he's going Widow Mines, but it's, why not? Have an Overseer with your army. Spread a bit of creep while we're waiting for that. What's this? Viking? I guess I'll build a Spore Crawler, because why not? <laughs> inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings, build Overlords. Pick those Overlords to the back, guys. All right, let's do it. It's time for the Boom Boom. All right, move in, and oh, there are Widow Mines as well. Whole army chilling out front, and uh, cool, we can run in there. Now remember, if the wall was up, we could click the Banelings on that. And we can click into the main base as well, making more Lings and Banes. And you can see just how explosive Ling Bane is. If it catches your opponent's army clumped up, oh god, that Widow Mine. Ow! And the Overseer gets here, which allows me to get revenge on the Widow Mines. Putting more Lings, just off my hotkeys. And we can go inject, inject, inject. <laughs> 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 I 
Do do it. <laughs> oh, all right. Very nice. And what's a really good habit? You guys will see me do this on the ladder all the time. I'll return to game. And I'll spread creep. I'll do another macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. I'll be like, oh, I need an overlord out here. Build an overlord, click it there. Build an overlord, click it out here. You know, like... Oh, okay, let's uh, start 2-2. Two, two. Oh, build more Ling Bay. If I have, like, tasks that I wanted to do, like, maybe I'd taken some gases, but I hadn't had time. I got distracted by the fighting, and I hadn't actually gone back and done it. Guess what? I'd go back now, and I'd be like, let's continue the game even with no opponent, and let's, let's do this. Let's build the drones, click on the gas, build the drones, click on the gas. Because for me, building that kind of checklist of, like, let's put this off till a little bit later... That's really effective. It's super effective of learning. Okay, I still have that 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 I have the compulsion to go back and finish those macro tasks that I haven't got around to yet. Oh, there's always little things you haven't quite gotten to yet in a StarCraft game that keeps getting pushed down the order of priorities. And if you can make a habit of going back and doing that, that'll be really fantastic. Are you doing any harassment or drops? Uh, just run buys is good. Like you can do some run buys and stuff. Uh, would have been good if I split my army to attack from two sides there. I keep forgetting to do that habit from the gold one, just because we've got so many other things we're bringing into play, and my opponents haven't really been forcing me to backstab as much. Um, but, uh, definitely something I could be mixing in a bit more. It's just, I, with Ling Bane, it's so mobile, you don't really need drops, you just run a clump of units in here and a clump in there, and, and they tend to find damage. I was trying Baneling drops, it never worked. You meant to drop them on the workers' box. Not, not, not on buildings. Baneling, Baneling drops are meant to drop on uh, on worker lines. So you, you go and unload in the worker line, they'll blow up on the, the workers and smash them. You do have to tell them to unload from the Overlord, though. Damn, that was a big sneeze. This might be our final game of Bronze to GM Plat League, guys. We have brought so many skills in. It's actually crazy just how much stuff. Good luck. Have fun, mate. Yeah, it's, it's even just adding those creep queens in. The potential tech in a hive has been interesting. See how it goes. All right, guys, we're going up against Sewer Badger with the tenacity of Arnie Badger and the filth of the sewers, an ungodly combo. Uh, is I believe a Platinum One player here, Protoss. And we're going to be continuing with our build, our work through Platinum. It's cool to get our, our build disrupted a little bit. Um, I would say a warning, you guys will mess up 10 times worse than I did in that last game. Uh, but just lean into the problem. When you get blocked, remember your opponent's build is always less efficient. My opponent in that last game had way less stuff at 9 minutes than all the other players I've played today because they went for that eBay block and invested in it. And that's something that's really, really common. People will invest in a disruptive strategy and the only way it pays off is if you panic and get angry and upset and go, this is so unfair, it's so disruptive. Oh, I hate it, I hate it. But if you just stay calm and just do your build, you'll be fine. Speaking of which, you wanted to block me too late, buddy. Get wrecked. No, two blocks in a row, dummy. If it was there earlier and it blocked it, same thing, guys. We'd just go take the third base, okay? So, we're just gonna keep doing what we do. Take the gas. Take the spawning pool. Oh, that's a, that's a forge, guys. Is this a cannon rush? Let's check. You know what, guys? Let's not react for another 10 seconds, because I know you guys don't look at your drone scouts, and I'd actually advise you not to. So, I'm allowed to react from now. Oh, God, that's a forge, guys. Okay, let's send a drone down. Let's send this overlord back. This is why against Protoss, it's best to leave the overlord directly over that. Ah, oh, okay. And he's completely walled me in my base. All right, so we're going to have to cancel this and build it elsewhere. And we'll break out with Spinecrawler. Uh, this Overlord is going to go up there and see if he expands or stays one base behind it as well. With one more drone. Going to build an Overlord here. Uh, we can... Oh, he's going to build it back there as well. Interesting. Okay. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we're going to build some wings there. We'll get one spine up here on the high ground. We'll make a queen. I mean, this is going to die no matter what, but he's committing so much to it that I'm okay with it. So that's why we're going to build a drone to retake our base, guys. And we'll make Ling Speed here. 
These lings are going to kill that probe. We just rally them over there. Got to be careful when the queen pops out, guys. She will just die if I don't pull her away. So I have to watch her. There we go. And you want to put a creep shimmer down? And we want to take this third base, okay? Now, the broodlings are going to fight this. So we might as well go in with our queen and zerglings as well. As the spine. And then while that's all happening, you know what? Let's come back and rebuild the hatchery, shall we? <laughs> yeah, because the spine crawler should be beating that uh, that cannon. Because it's only two cannons, I think we're fine there, guys. And we're about to find out. Let's bring the queen to make sure that dies. All right, build more drones. Send a drone to the third base. Looks like they both killed each other at the same time, so that was okay. Now, this would have been much better if we just kept the Overlord over the natural guys, and that would have made our life much easier. So, just a reminder, that's what you should be doing. No expansion for my opponent. So, whilst I am building an expansion, <clears throat> we've got to be careful. Spread some creep out. And we're going to build Zerglings. Now, we're already oversaturated, so let's rally to the natural. Shift 1. Double tap. Make camera location. Shift one, double tap, make camera location. Fourth and fifth base are good. Make sure everything's rallied to the natural. Keep injecting. Wing speed's done. Now, if your opponent's cheesed you at the start, and then one base, you need to check the corners. So what did I just do, guys? Let me show you one more time. A move, shift, A move, shift, A move. Shift left click a zergling. A move, shift, A move, shift, A move, shift, A move. Shift D select a zergling. So we're just checking there's no corner bases or proxies on the edges. Now we've got a new queen, a Cersei. She's going to move down. Move the spine crawler down. We can build a Latifah. Build a few more drones. And surprise, surprise. If people cannon rush you or open with battle cruiser or turtle stuff, always check the corners. Remember we did this in that turtle Terran game earlier? They always do this every single time. So we're going to build a few more overlords here. Got a third base up. We're going to build more Zerglings as well. We'll just try to kill this cannon before it finishes if we can. Probably can't get it. That's okay. Because this base is primed for the taking. So at this point, guys, this is what we do. What we call chucking a Zerg. So what's chucking a Zerg? Chucking a Zerg is where you're way ahead in every regard. But you decide to rally units in. Like a true Platinum player. So I'm just going to keep building Zerglings. And rallying them in a few at a time. This is the objectively most obviously worst thing you could possibly do. But I've cast enough of everyone's games. I've watched enough profiles to know this is exactly what you do in this scenario every single time. You're just going to go, YOLO! YOLO! You're just going to keep A-moving Lings. So we're going to keep A-moving Lings. And it might actually work if they don't quickly build more cannons or warp in units, but it really shouldn't. Obviously just macroing gets us ahead here. It's still three bases versus two base, and we can kill this later. Our opponents spread thin like butter over too much toast, you know? But we're just going to keep A-moving that for now. And now we're going to Oh, God, it's not working. Shit, shit, shit. Ah, ah. All you needed to do was drone your bases, make double evo, 1-1, one, one, bane nest. Do your normal things, guys. Stop this silliness. Inject, inject, inject. Don't, don't be trying to adapt until you get a bit more experience. Let's go, uh, we don't really need the lair, but let's go lair, second gas, family nest, evos all at once. As well as the double macro hatchery. Now you might be like, isn't that a bit too much? Yeah, it is. We don't quite have the money for all of it. That's okay. We'll change the rally point back here because that's so many workers. Shift, one. Holy shit, these guys actually did damage, guys. I stopped looking at them. But we're just going to click this thing. They actually did damage. I can't believe that. They really shouldn't have. The stupidity of what I did actually paid off. Um, to be fair, if I was a true Platinum player, I wouldn't have injected properly to reinforce. And that's why the reinforce would have petered out twice as bad, right? Because I would have tunnel visioned on the lings that I wouldn't have injected at the same time. I've got to remember to be a true Platinum player. I must make deeper mistakes. All right. Anyways, uh, let's build some more drones to replace these ones in the main. We've got 1-1 one, one, and soon Bane Speed on the way, guys. Shift one, inject. I don't know what rally before the base first means. Rally before the base first. Oh god. Alright guys, let's try and make some queenies here. Gonna bring them over and start building lots of spore crawlers. And we're gonna click our queens. We put them on shift four. We're gonna click on the weak void ray. And we're doing nothing but building queens here. Can we get a void ray? 
Please. Looks like that's a no. Alright, I've got five queens building right now. See the white dot there? That tells us what's building and what's not. We're going to build some drones into the space. Okay, try and build some more spores up there in the main. But we desperately need drones. Remember what we learned in the first two episodes? Whenever you have to build air, harass, uh, defense, spores, you kill your drone count, which really hurts. So let's inject, inject, inject. But let's also go back and add these all to the creep slash defense key. Because our opponent's got a lot of air units, okay? Grab some drones. We need a few more drones on that base. I'm actually overbuilding them. Because we're probably going to need to build more spores as time goes on. Should be good. We're going to try and make a spire. Void rays counter corruptors. So this is actually good, guys. Because we're getting to a point where... Inject, inject. Add these all to the defense key. We can aim with all of our queens up here. I think this is the point where we're going to go hydras specifically to counter the void rays. Maybe? No, no, no. We're not going to do that. That's dumb. Screw it. Unnecessary. All right, guys. Let's build a fourth base and a fifth base. And let's go around and try to make sure we make some more queens. Queen... Queen, queen. And let's try to make sure we build some more drones as well. Because we want to, if we're if we're being forced to go air units, we do need some more drones, remember. So what are we going to do? You guys know the drill. Build overlords. Build gases. Take gases. Normally against air, the best way to beat it is Ling Bane. Because you just ignore it and go kill all their buildings. Let's use our... Queen, Freddie Mercury band here to do what they can. Q injects on those. Let's get 2-2 two, two upgrades. Inject, inject, inject. Let's go through and build these drones. Three on gas. Three on gas. Oh, what's that? That's a lot of oracles, guys. Oh my. Alright, let's build more drones on gas. That's gonna have to get cancelled. Alright, so I'd like to build muters to deal with this because we don't have a lot of gas yet. Don't ever get stuck in being like, ah, oh, five panic muters. Let's go down here. And let's just send all these drones down to this base. And we want to be, remember, we want to have 70 drones. So if we can have four base gas, we can make a lot of muters. But first we need zerglings on the ground because if a few zealots come in, they win the game right now. Inject. 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 Inject gives you lava producing out of the hatcheries, guys. Every lava inject, there's an extra three lava that'll pop out 30 seconds later when that gray bar completes. It's what keeps the Zerg machine running. Let's send some Zerglings across the map to see what we're up against. And in the meantime, we've got queens, we've got spores that should protect these bases, right? If we get in trouble, maybe we need to build mass meter. But for now... The best bet is to say we're on 70 drones. I'm actually a little bit lower at 66 here. So let's build a few more. Just saturate the gas there. Let's just deny these bases. So let's send these guys. They're going to be Alt 7. And we're just going to click them on that Nexus. Behind this, what are we doing? Mass Zerglings, guys. Absolute mass Zerglings. Inject, inject, inject. And we're just making them. We can double tap 7 to jump to our key. Now, oracles ruin Zerglings, guys. So if the oracles turn on their lasers like that, you should always try to run away. And you can see they're making Zealots now as well, which is a pretty good army. First what I've got. So we're going to keep making Lings. Banes will smash Zealots. They'll also smash cannons and batteries. We're also going to grab these guys, Alt-7. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to shift-click to the top and then into the main base. If they leave the wall open, maybe they get in and do big damage, okay? Mutation. Inject, inject, inject. Nothing but wings. Oh, we're going to make banelings now. So our queens are going to run away. Our drones are going to run away. And we're going to try to hang on. Let's drop some transfusers if we can, guys. Trying to wait for these banelings to morph. Trying to get these banelings more. And there we go. So that's a pretty good fight for the Ling Bane, which can now counterattack. We're going to avoid this base and try to kill the third and the natural. Those Lings are doing massive damage, which is awesome. Queens are beating all of his units. Let's grab the idle workers. And let's macro behind it. The fifth base, fourth base. Let's try to move a Spore Crawler over here. 
<laughs> move these spores around. Hey, move that base. And let's go inject. 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 What's my drone count? Let's try and build a bunch of drones, guys. Oh! So we actually killed all of his stuff. I still thought he had a lot of economy. Let's build lings. The ling run by won us the game, guys. The ling run by got in there and was killing his entire base. Can you believe it? And then these guys came in and killed that nexus as well. Wow! Crazy game there, guys. Luckily, we didn't get blocked at the start, right? Don't you guys like how he faked pretending to get the block? And he's like, oh no, I missed, I missed blocking your base. Oh no. And we learnt a very valuable rule about ZVP, which is never move the overlord from above there or always chase the probe with a drone. Either of those work. There is another thing you can do, which is of course, pay attention to your drone scout and actually check if there's a forge. Either, any of these, any of these work versus Protoss, guys. Any of these. Preferably just pay attention to the drone scout. If you're drone scouting this early, you'll always get warning early enough. And what would our response be if we were actually paying attention? Let's say we don't notice until a few seconds later. Say a minute 14. And we go, wait a second, that's a forge. Immediately we want to attack this probe with a drone. Um, there might be a second probe. So we want to send another drone down to just look around the natural. And if they start putting down pylons and the like, we can pull a lot more workers just to make sure we shut it down. And that would be fine. Even when the pylons go down here, if we pull drones immediately, we can break those pylons and get rid of the cannons on the low ground before they cause any real damage. But because I simulated not paying attention to my drone scout, things get a lot harder for us because we're not reacting until the pylons are already halfway built. There's not enough time to shut it down. Now, I handled it pretty calmly from there. Um, I said I was going to cancel the hatchery, and if I did that, it would have been a perfectly fine decision. I could have slowly broken out with a spine crawler and tried to take another hatchery. The only downside there is he technically could have cannon rushed the third base as well. So if I did that, I would have needed to move my overlord over there and deal with it and that sort of stuff. But uh, it is what it is. So, you know, you, you, my, my whole theory is don't, this situation is hard. It is very high skill. And what's not high skill is just look at your worker scout, pull drones, don't let it get up to begin with. Easiest day of your life. If you guys are still struggling with cannon rushes, I put out a video here on my pig coaching channel. Put this out one oh, month ago. Right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? And basically, but I show first person how to defend it from one of the best cannon rushes in the entire game, who's constantly doing really fancy positioning. So if you guys want to watch that, go, go give it a look. Check it out. Um... But essentially, that would have made my life a lot easier. And the key thing here, which was very, very important, was a few minutes later when I rallied lings at him. Getting a few lings out for map vision and checking edge bases was huge. But at this point, if I just A move these lings to distract my opponent <clears throat> and then just macro it up, by the time those void rays come, came, I could have just A moved lings, banes, killed this base, won the entire game. And the void rays would have either been stuck defending while I built anti-air, or they would have lost the base trade, one or the other. But by rallying Lings mindlessly into this over and over and over again, um, it actually was, was a terrible idea. Now, obviously, I could have focus fired the shield battery, and then the cannon would have been the best way to break this. And if I did that, I probably could have broken it. But that's besides the point. I always feel like there are situations where that can be a good call, but... The thing is, if you know about someone having a corner base straight away, the longer the game goes, the more this is a handicap for them, because they always have to worry about defending here and here. Our only problem is wall offs, and this is just not that big a problem. It's like, Ling Bane will kill this so easily later on. My opponent's in such a bad compromised position. So they'll be like, oh, I gotta punish that. It's like, dude, we're equal workers. I could drone up three bases and get so far ahead. But by rallying these lings, I allowed my opponent to bait me into attacking into a position without really thinking about it, without being pre-planned. He gets up his two Stargate Void Ray transition and actually causes a lot of damage to the point where you could imagine those Void Rays straight up winning the game because I had almost no anti-air when they arrived. They could have probably won the game if they were reinforced just a little bit better. <coughs> Droop says, Pig, all the way to Masters. You can just cancel the natural, make gas number two, and then Nidus all in. They always go Stargate, and it always works. 
Sure, if you want. Or you can pull drones and never even let them get in a good position in the first place and just win with a nice good drone pull. Your choice, of course. There are many ways to skin a cat. Of course, if you're a psychopath who's actually skinning cats, I have to question your life choices. But, uh, but yeah. What's up, guys? How do you deal with Ling Bane rushes, Zerg? Says crew shot. Uh, yeah, you gotta be specific. What do you mean by rush? There's a lot of different, like, what time did they hit you? With how many workers? Were they on one base, two base? All that stuff, let us know. All of that really helps us uh, get a little bit more context on what's going on. <clears throat> what could my opponent have done differently in his attack? Um, well, he didn't need to attack there. But essentially, the uh, in the big fight at the end... Okay, let's take a look. He's only on 49 probes. So this is pretty all in. So I guess he kind of needs to attack. Obviously, leave a unit in the wall changes everything. But there's a huge problem. Which is, that is not a wall, guys. That is a gigantic gap. I'm telling you, a zealot trying to fill this gap is going to be like a, a rather not well-endowed man with a heavy set lass. Let's just say it's going to be a little bit like tossing a hot dog down a hallway. Let's put it that way. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, you're going to struggle as a zealot to fulfill your role. Let's put it that way. It's, it's almost impossible to plug that with a single unit. This is a diagonal, gigantic choke. This is a this is a bit of a gape uh, here. This is kind of gro gross. So you always want to make sure when you wall off, your buildings are overlapping. If that gateway was one space to the left, there would be a full space overlapping where a unit could easily sit anywhere in this region and block it. Likewise, if the cyber core was further forward, you could even have three spaces gapping, which would be much, much better. And, and that would be huge. But in the attack itself, you want to try and keep your units together. Problem my opponent has is they've used up all their Oracle energy on the defense. So what happened is Sewer Badger went for a heavy Oracle, used all the laser energy, killing a hatchery in the top, and then defending the Nexus from Lings. Forgot to turn the lasers off, I believe. So a lot of these Oracles can't even fight. So it's basically just 22 Zealots versus Ling Bane. What they should have done is moved right up into the natural, and tried to kill as much as possible before the Banelings finished morphing, and then spread out before the when the Banelings finished, or kill the Baneling cocoons before they finished morphing. But more likely, kill all the Ling Queen first, rather than having half of your army over there fighting a hatchery. So he went in a few units at a time, got them surrounded, got them surrounded. I also had plus two carapace. My opponent only had plus one attack, which means it's taking three attacks rather than two for the zealots to kill me. So my upgrades are actually making the lings really good. He has no armor upgrades. My zerglings have plus two melee. So my zerglings actually beat the crap out of these zealots, funnily enough. And uh, he really needed the oracles, the void rays, and the units to get in and do critical damage earlier rather than later. I see a lot of zergs defend cannon rushes with ravages. When's the appropriate time to do that? When you messed up and let them get cannons up in your base. Yeah. Um, like I said, if you guys just defend with worker pools, you can defend every single cannon rush. Um, ravages are for when you've messed up and let yourself get in a bad position. You don't spot it early, you get surprised it's already up, you immediately drop a second gas, you make ravages, and you'd be surprised how often you can break out and then counterattack and win the game. Or, as people in chat were saying, you can go straight for a Nidus uh, Roach or Nidus Roach Zerg and counterattack as well. Pop some queens out in their base as well, that can be good. But both of those, uh, I would say, are, you know, you're letting them get to a position where if they know how to follow it up correctly, it will be tough for you. And just pulling workers shuts down cannon rushes. It goes for every race. It completely shuts down cannon rushes. And it's also really good micro practice. Yeah. <clears throat> just got back to 3,500 after watching Last Bronze to Jam. Cheers. Hey, congrats, Unicorn. Unicorn, please. I have 6,000 games. I really struggle with spending lava still. My injects are good, but my idle lava is always a problem. Have you been watching the show at all, Ryder? It's like my brain refuses. You're meant to every macro cycle. So you're probably, what you have is a chaotic system. Inject, inject, inject. Watch, watch me. What do I do? I inject, 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 and then I spend all the lava every time. It's linked together. That's called the macro cycle. If you do that, every 30 seconds, even every 40, even 50 seconds, you're going to be pretty good at spending that money. And if you're playing Mass Ling, double macro hatch, fourth and fifth base. You need lots of hatcheries. You have to retrain your brain, so many bad habits. Yeah, 
Zerg is very difficult if you never set up good mental systems to, like I said, macro, all the basics should be like tying your shoelaces. It should just happen without having to think about it. Yeah. It's, it's such a game changer. When you get the macro cycle down, Zerg goes from 4,000 APM impossible to, oh, this is easy. Like Terrans and Protosses that understand the macro cycle are like, dude, Zerg macro is so easy. People talk about Protoss macro being easy. Go macro with Zerg. Once you get the macro cycle down, every single thing is produced from one building. You just hold buttons down. Like Terran players are in awe at how simple Zerg production is once you get the macro cycle down. Yeah, we always go macro hatcheries first with this build, but if you want to go fourth and fifth base first, go for it. More chance of them getting sniped off. They take a bit longer for the drones to get out there, so it takes a bit more APM to hotkey them. But having the base up earlier can be nicer. So it's up to you, Bloki King. I hope this helped you guys out a lot today. I really do think that this really helps uh, a lot of players. I hope the creep spread helps you guys out. I know this is really a work in progress, the creep spread, and you guys will suck at it at first. But we're basically doing this to build skills for the future. It won't pay off now, but it'll pay off when you're in Diamond and above. Um, we've got some notes on defending one base Ling Bane, how to beat Turtle players. We, we, we had a really good game with that where we went 90 drone and just smashed Ling Bane into their third, never let them get the third up. And it was that urgency on denying their third. It was the early read, the denying the third was really big. We got to defend one base Ling Bane, which was great. Hive Tech, we, talked, we got to there a bit more. We did the new ZVZ two base wall off build, which was fantastic. Uh, really good, just simple roach wall off build. Uh, Overlord sacrifice we're doing more often. We're starting to generally look at scouting information. We're going to expand on that a lot in Diamond League, which will be split into multiple videos because Diamond is a massive league. Rapid fire, how to spread creep. I mean, we just did so much stuff today. We introduced Freddie Mercury as well. So this was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I really do help it hoped you out. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you in the next episode for Diamond 3.